It's the first Saturday of autumn. Cool weather, colorful leaves, and college football. And here in Iowa, where the largest crowd in the school's history hopes the seventh-ranked Hawkeyes can topple number three Ohio State in a game with Rose Bowl implications. And here at Kentucky, where it's homecoming and the unbeaten Wildcats host Tulane's Green Wave, which last week swept over Florida State. And also here at Texas A&M, where tailback Ernest Anderson is doubtful as unbeaten Oklahoma State takes on Jackie Sherrill's Aggies. Hour prior to kickoff, the entire cadet corps, 2,300 strong, marches into Kyle Field prepared to stand for the entire game to signify their readiness to respond to a call for assistance if one is given, and to do so in remembrance of Dr. E. King Gill, the original 12th man. The history and tradition of college football come alive again today as CBS Sports presents the Aggies against Oklahoma State. The following is an exclusive presentation of CBS Sports. From the campus of Texas A&M University in College Station, Texas, it's the Oklahoma State Cowboys versus the Texas A&M Aggies. Sponsored by AC Delco, General Motors Corporation. AC Delco is the way to go. IBM. And by the U.S. Army, a place to be all you can be. Perhaps no school in the country has a stronger or more loyal following than does Texas A&M. And again this afternoon on a gorgeous September day, we expect a crowd of between 55 and 60,000 for this interstate meeting between Oklahoma State and Texas A&M. Good afternoon once again, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist, and welcome to the first time Oklahoma State has been here at Kyle Field since 1939. They are undefeated. The Aggies are once beaten, but both of these teams probably would feel quite comfortable in the company of Rodney Dangerfield. They are enormously desirous of some respect. Working as our expert analyst again today is former Oklahoma quarterback Steve Davis, who knows both clubs very well. And Steve, I think that's particularly true in the case of Oklahoma State. Jimmy Johnson's done an outstanding job at Oklahoma State. When he came on staff in 1979, they were on probation. They were on probation the first two years he was there. And he's done a lot of good things for the program. They, they've gone, with the exception of playing Nebraska and Oklahoma, 15-3-2 and two in Big 8 play. They finished third three out of the four years and in the upper division every year. So he's turned the program around. Also, this is an important game for their players, Vernon. I, their players need the respect. They have not beaten a non-conference foe on the road yet. They need that respect. Now, in the case of Texas A&M, the critics are carping again. They think the Aggies ought to be undefeated. Well, there's a lot of pressure on Jackie Sherrill because of his contract and all the things that are talked about. People at Texas A&M have to be realistic. They've only had eight winning seasons in 23 years here. It takes a while to turn a football program around, and Jackie Sherrill's doing it methodically, but he's getting it done. Jackie Sherrill and Jimmy Johnson, 40 years of age. Their uh, relationship goes back to 1968. They are good friends, and they face each other this afternoon as Oklahoma State has come south across the Red River to take on the Aggies of Texas A&M. Back with NCAA college football in a moment. We are in the heart of Central Texas, College Station located in the middle of a triangle formed by Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, and San Antonio, 36,000 students. And they host the Oklahoma State Cowboys today, having made the trip down on a charter flight yesterday from Stillwater in the center of Oklahoma. The head coach is Jimmy Johnson, and for the first time in his five years, the Cowboys are 2-0. They will, in all probability today, however, not have the services of the All-American running back, Ernest Anderson. And, Steve, that's just a great shame that we will not be able to see him play. Well, Ernest Anderson is one of the football players across the country that very few people know about. He led the nation last year in rushing when we had a... Herschel Walker that dominated, but he is a very special player in the Oklahoma State system, and he will not be there today. However, in his place, because he's out with a groin pull, Sean Jones has played quite well the last two games. Very little drop-off for Sean Jones. 5.6 yards per carry, a very smart player, and will get the ball a lot on the sweet play all afternoon. 
Now, in the case of Texas A&M, you're going to get your first look at John Mazur, who transferred from Southern California and sat out last year. John Mazur has played in a lot of big football games. He's beaten Notre Dame at Notre Dame. He's beaten Oklahoma. He's beaten UCLA. Big games are not uh, uncommon to him. He has made a transition in the in the offense for Texas A&M. He's doing adapting very, very well. And defensively, a very familiar name, Billy Cannon Jr., who has gone from strong safety, free safety, and now a linebacker. The coaches say that he's enjoying football more this year than ever before. He's been a safety at free safety and strong safety now he's an outside linebacker and really gives up uh, them a chance to have an outside linebacker that can make big plays John McClintock is our referee and Oklahoma State has well, let's listen in Texas A&M will defend this goal microphones are in order Texas A&M will defend the goal to our right that is the south goal they are dressed in their home uniforms, maroon and white. And the Cowboys of Oklahoma State, 2-0. A&M is 1-1. One and, one. and now one of the great traditions at this school, the football team facing the student body and singing the spirit of Aggieland. It was written in 1925, the words by a student, Marvin H. Mims, and the music by Colonel Richard C. Dunn. It's the spirit of Aggieland, and Steve Davis, that can be intimidating to a visiting team. I there think. is no doubt that to sit there or to stand there as an Oklahoma State football player and to watch those players, all of them lined up, the numbers, and saying the dog is barking at you, you're wondering, what are we getting ourselves into here already? And it is intimidating. It is not a comfortable environment. You don't get that everywhere you go, only here at Texas A&M. Alan Smith, who had six field goals to tie an NCAA record last week in a win over Arkansas State, will kick off. And here is the 12th man, 80 degrees, 12 miles per hour, continued sunny, humidity 37%. And here are the members of the student body who volunteered to come out of the stands. And Ike Lyles, who wears number two, was the 12th man who made the first hit, that in the opening game against California. Now, the only scholarship player out there is Alan Smith. So you get your first look at one of the most publicized elements of college football this year when Jackie Sherrill announced a year ago that he wanted to use student body members for home games. Many thought he was uh, just teasing, but he said absolutely. And they had 241 students who responded to the call. 17 have been chosen. They play in home games only. And there are the two men deep, Robbie Riley and Harry Roberts. And we'll see how these kids give up their bodies on the kickoff. Well, they won't have to this time because Alan Smith sends it nine yards back. 
Oklahoma State, 2-0 and under Jimmy Johnson. We'll start Rusty Hilger at quarterback. Sean Jones in place of Ernest Anderson, the tailback. Kelly Cook, the fullback. Bobby Riley at split end in place of the starter, Ken Brown, and Jamie Harris. Up front, John Sikelski, Kevin Igo, David Tucker, Ralph Partita, Paul Blair, and the tight end is John Chesler. First down, 10 at the 20. Cook formation, two wide receivers wide to the right side. Backs are in the eye. Cook the short man. Sean Jones. And that's good for a gain of five. Into the arms of Jeff Payne, number 49 for Texas A&M. Defensively, the Aggies have gone to a 3-4 this year. And up front, they've got Ray Childress, Chris Lammers, and a very light defensive end, Scott Polk. The linebackers, Jeff Payne, Greg Berry, Jerry Bullitt, and Billy Cannon. And then the secondary, Billy Brown, Darrell Austin, Domingo Bryant, and Wayne Asbury. That is probably the weakest element of the Aggie defense. Second down, five, Oklahoma State. Man in motion coming across from the near side. And off to Jones again. Popped to the line of scrimmage, and he gained two. Jeff Payne with his second tackle and your first close-up look at R.C. Slocum, the defensive coordinator on the right, and Jackie Sherrill. It is so important for Oklahoma State early in the football game to be very patient. They're very methodical on offense. They don't rely on the big play. They'll run the sweet play a lot. If they can just be patient, try to sustain long drives, keep Texas A&M out on the field, they will have an advantage in the fourth quarter if they can keep the game close. Third and two. Pitch out, right side, Domingo Bryant, great play, number six. The tackle made by Ray Childress with the strong safety, Domingo Bryant came up to force the run inside and right into the arms of number 53. There's the 12th man. Now, every one of those kids played high school football. It's not as if they were unfamiliar totally with, uh, with the game of football. Billy Cannon who is leading the country in punt returns, is back to the 37. He had one of 60 yards, and this kick is into the wind and fairly short. Cannon fair catch at the 44, and a flag is down. We may see a violation of that two-yard rule, a brand-new rule this year in NCAA football. It is the responsibility of the uh, team that uh, is going down to... Now let's make sure we before we say it. <laughs> the kicking team, they've got to give the receiver the opportunity to catch the ball. He's got to be within two yards. Stay away from two yards. A cylinder up around the player. You've got to stay outside of it. It's the defensive player's responsibility to stay away from it. OSU violated the area. Here's the markoff inside Oklahoma State country. It's a big one. And the ball will be down at the 41-yard line, and John McClintock will let us know. I think this is the new rule this year. Interference with the opportunity for a catch. That is exactly it. Take a look at it, Steve. What makes it so difficult is the defensive man's got to watch where the ball is. The, the receiver, he can start moving around and playing just a little bit, and the cylinder continues to flow around him at two yards. And he's, he can put the pressure on the defensive man. That is a brand new rule. First and 10 A&M. They've got the ball at the 41. The man in motion to create a flip on the right side. Pitch out. Jimmy Hawkins. He's got a big hole and gouges out yardage. Down to the 32. Adam Hines made the tackle. Let's check the offense now for the Aggies. John Mazur at quarterback. Rod Bernstein, a freshman in the backfield with George Smith. Jimmy Williams, Shea Walker is a split end. Rich Seiler, the tight end. Nate Stedman, Greg Porter, Matt Darwin, Ken Reeves and the best of the offensive lineman, Tommy Robinson. Second down, one at the 30, just underway, no score. Double tight end set, one running back. That's Hawkins again. John Washington made the tackle. And defensively for Oklahoma State, Warren Thompson, a junior college transfer, Rodney Harding, John Washington, Leslie O'Neill, and James Ham, who was guilty of that infraction on the punt, Matt Mungler and James Spencer in linebacker, and Chris Rockins, Adam Hines, Harry Roberts, and Roderick Fisher in the defensive secondary. Enough to move the chains. It'll be first down 10 A&M at the 30-yard line. Interesting, Steve. They have yet to score a touchdown rushing this year. They're really trying to find out who their running backs are right now. They're undecided. And they've gone with a double tight end set and one running back. Shea Walker in motion near side. Delayed handoff. Goes to Jimmy Hawkins. No game. A 
A&M opened the season by losing to California 19 to 17 on a safety with 17 seconds remaining. And then they devastated Arkansas State last week 38 nothing. Oklahoma State defeated North Texas. And then on the road last week they won at Cincinnati. Second and 10. Mazur stays with a double tight end set. Pitch out. Hawkins around right end. Got a good seal block. And then slips and there's a flag down at the 18 yard line. Tackle made by James Ham, number 40, the defensive end. 24 yard line. There is a flag on the play. Holding. Aggies. Today's officials, John McClintock, Bill Anger, Tom Aylins, Don George, Jerry Kleinsmith, and Randy McAnally. Split crew once again from the Southwest and the Big Eight. And this penalty goes to the South against Texas A&M. Ball is spotted at the 36, and McClintock, John McClintock, lets Holding it go. on the offense, 10 yard penalty, second down. That'll set up a second down and 16. Duncan Webb and Rich Seiler are the two defensive ends for uh, the offensive ends, the tight ends for Texas A&M. And two wide receivers, and they stay with that double tight end set with one running back. That'll be another flag. John Washington, the nose guard, came across. Let's see what happens. Just comes across, making contact. And that'll cost him five. Now, he, if he would not have made contact and gotten back before the snap of the ball, there would have been no penalty. Defense. George Smith comes into the lineup now, and Jimmy Hawkins comes out. The five-yard penalty makes it second down, 11, Texas A&M. No score in the game, 11-16 to go first quarter. Aggies' first possession, they took over at the 41 of Oklahoma State following a penalty on the fair catch of the punt. A screen pass from the left-hander to the left side. Rich Seiler, the tight end. And a fine defensive play at the 29 by Chris Watkins, number 37, and John Washington, number 80. There's a look at Rockins, senior out of Sherman, Texas. He is one of 35 young men on the Oklahoma State squad who come from Texas. Interesting, Steve, they have recruited more Texas athletes than has Oklahoma. Your alma mater. Well, I, Jimmy Johnson, of course, has an outstanding background in recruiting and, and really has become very picky and selective in his players. He has gotten smarter athletes, better students, and he has found a lot of them in Texas. Mazur back to throw on third and eight. He's got a very strong arm, comes deep, single coverage, incomplete. Contact, but no flag at the two. And Rod Fisher out of Dallas was defending on the play. It'll be fourth down, and we'll see Alan Smith for the first time today. There is a tradition, as well as all of the others here at Texas A&M, I guess, that you've got to be barefoot to kick the ball because Alan Smith is another in a long lineup. He succeeds David Hardy, who succeeded Eric Franklin, or uh, Tony Franklin. Eric Franklin is on the uh, on the roster. Now, this kid kicked one. We saw it. 71 yards in practice. He is kicking with the wind. It'll be a 45-yard effort for hash mark Kyle Stewart to hold. Got it. So he is now 8 out of 11 for the year. 10-12 remaining in the first quarter. Alan Smith's 45-yard field goal has given the Aggies a 3-0 edge. Bobby Riley and Harry Roberts are deep to return. And the 12th man back on the field for the second time. I think they get upset, Steve, when, uh, when he does put it in the end zone. Here's the kick out of the end zone. It'll come out to the 20. Oklahoma State gets the ball for the second time. 10-12 to go in the first quarter. And a crowd expected to be 60,000 today. First time they have played here since 1939. And the fourth time in the school's history they have played here. High formation. 
Sean Jones gets the handoff at left tackle, and he's out to the 25. They are a very basic team. Very conservative in their offensive style, but that's fine. Jimmy Johnson has a philosophy. There are three phases of the game. The power offense, the option offense, and the passing game, as we look at other scores that are happening in the Southwestern Conference, in the Southwest Conference. They rely on the power game and the pass. And they are, should be and try to be methodical. Motion now from the left side. A handoff again to Sean Jones. Room to run. Fumble. Aggies have it. Daryl Austin, number one. A sophomore from Fort Worth. So the first turnover of the game has gone Texas A&M's way. They are only 35 yards away. In previous years, Oklahoma State has been plagued by mistakes or fumbles, turnovers. Watch this. It's an effort mistake by Sean Jones. Number three, bounces the ball outside, trying to get additional yards. Watch him. He's got the ball out away from his body. It hit his left knee, and it popped loose. And Daryl Austin, number one, the right corner, falls on the ball. Aggies have the ball for 35. High formation and two wide receivers this time. Rod Bernstein, the freshman from here in Bryan, gets almost nothing on first down as Chris Rockins makes the tackle. Tackle by number 33, David Webb at number 99, Leslie O'Neill. What is so important for Oklahoma State to try to concentrate on today, if they can make Texas A&M go long distances, Texas A&M in their first two games has not proved it, proven to anyone that they can go a long distance. They've got to make them go 80 yards and sustain a drive. Second down and nine. Mazur will throw. No, he will not. Flags fly before the play was uh, begun. That was only the third fumble for Oklahoma State this year, so it has not been a problem. No, in previous years it has. This year it has not been a problem for them. Texas A&M, they've had the problem taking the ball long distances. They didn't score a rushing touchdown in the Arkansas State game, yet beat them 38 to nothing. And already we have seen one drive stall and Allen Smith kick a field goal. Here's the call from John McClintock. Dead ball encroachment on the offense. Second down. Second down. And 14. John Mazur from Canoga Park, California. Second down and 14. 8.50 to go, first quarter. He'll take the two-step drop, and he's got a man open, but Jimmy Teal can't hang on, and he was dancing with the sideline at any rate. It may have been a problem for him to come down legally. I really like John Mazur, the quarterback. He is an intelligent young man. In fact, almost so intelligent that when they try to put in a little new wrinkle in the offense, he really questions the coach's philosophy on it. He's been a big game player, as we said earlier. Beat Oklahoma, Notre Dame, UCLA. So really, the transition of losing a great quarterback like Kubiak last year has been made relatively easy by John Mazur. He has a third down and 14 right now. Blitz is coming. Blind side, draw play. And John Washington stayed home to make the tackle. Number 80, the nose guard. And it'll be fourth down, and we'll see Alan Smith for the second time. So the problems moving the ball continue for AM. That's right. Now, AM's philosophy has changed a lot this year. They are a throwing team. They're not a rushing team. They're not settled on their running back. So that's part of the problem. They spend more time in pass protection than rush protection. This will be a 59 yard field goal. Among the six that Alan Smith kicked last week was one of this distance. Kids on a roll. And what a roll it is. He is 9 of 12 for 1983. And we'll be back in a moment. That ought to be a lot of fun tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern from the Orange Bowl in Miami. Notre Dame against Miami. Fighting Irish 1-1, one and one, trying to bounce back from their loss to Michigan State last week. And Miami has won two out of three this year, including a trouncing of the University of Houston. Live at 9 o'clock tonight, Eastern Time on CBS. Alan Smith, and you've seen some idea of how strong his leg is with the win. 
By the way, officially that was a 58-yard field goal a moment ago, not 59. And here's the kick again. Helps a lot when they don't get any run back. Kicking game is so important. You just, you just, here they are 6-0 six, uh, six ahead right now, and they really have not had any type of drive at all, and yet, and, and really not that close to the goal line. They were not even in four down territory, and that man right there puts points on the board. He was a red shirt a year ago. He did kick in 1980. He was two out of five then. And here comes Rusty Hilger, who was out last year himself with an injury. Starting quarterback, Oklahoma State. Sean Jones, left side. For about six. Ray Childress makes the tackle. Jones had 160 yards last Saturday night in the win at Cincinnati. And he's averaging 101 yards per game. Ernest Anderson pulled a groin in the first game against North Texas, having been held to 80 yards and 25 carries. They thought earlier this week he could come back, but he tested it Tuesday, Wednesday, and yesterday, and they decided no. Second down, four. There's a rush, another fumble. Aggies. I believe have got it. There's no official indication yet. And it will stay in the possession of Oklahoma State. Let's, let's see if the handoff was clean. Sean Jones gets the ball, secures it. Right there, it was a good... Was that Cannon 22? Couldn't tell who popped the ball loose, but it was a good effort right there. Daryl Smith, number 39. Third down, three. Sean Jones. Kenny Zachary instead, number two. And he's not going anywhere. Daryl Smith and Ray Childress. Number 39, a sophomore from Pasadena, Darrell Smith. This is a real test on Oklahoma State. They've got to remain patient. Just because they've not moved the ball, set tight, be patient, keep coming back, keep forcing the issue. Fourth down, and John Conway is on to punt. He's averaging just over 44 yards per punt this year. Billy Cannon back to return it. And Conway is kicking into a very strong win. Line drives it. Cannon at the 48. To the 45. Terrence Scott makes the tackle. Five minutes, 54 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Two field goals have given the Aggies a 6 nothing lead. 54 to go in the first quarter of play. Alan Smith with two field goals has given the Aggies a 6-0 lead, and they've got great field position once again. An inexplicable problem for Oklahoma State. They have not had the reputation this year, Steve, of giving up the ball. Maybe the intimidation early in the football game was a factor, but Texas A&M doesn't want them to drive the ball down their throat. They want to try to see those kind of mistakes, and that's what they've got. Double tight end set with one running back once again. Shea Walker in motion near side. Handoff goes to Jimmy Hawkins, the sophomore from San Antonio. Now let's go to Brent Musburger in New York for this NCAA update. The guys of Ohio State trailed Iowa by a field goal, 3-0, but watch Keith Byers on the dive. Straight ahead blocking here against Iowa's defense, and Ohio State now leads it 7-3. Let's go back to Vern. Okay, Brad, our score is 6-0, 5-25 to go first quarter. Second down, 9, a at the 44 of Oklahoma State. Mazur shakes the tackle, flips it out in the flat where it is dropped by George Smith, number 44. There's a look at Sean Jones and Ernest Anderson, that groin pull. 
has kept him out for two games, 1,877 yards last year, and he's, uh, I guess, Steve, the most unknown great runner in the country. He truly is. And the, the thing that I hear every coach at Oklahoma State talk about is how much of a quality person he is. A cheerleader did not play in the Cincinnati game last week and was the first guy to greet Sean Jones when he was scoring when he was playing well, and that's the kind of player that Ernest Anderson is, and it's unfortunate he's not on the field. Third down, nine, Texas A&M at the Oklahoma State 44. Mazur in the pocket. He's got time, but he can't find anybody home, and he is dropped for a loss at the 49, and Alan Smith is going to try it from long distance. Now, the school record here is 62 yards, set by Tony Franklin against Baylor in 1976. 65 yards, I beg your pardon. When he had a kick of 65 and 62, and they are not going to give him a chance to break that as Kyle Stewart comes on to punt. They don't want to give OSU that kind of field position if he misses. That's right. Here's the snap back to Kyle Stewart. Nice high kick. Nobody back. And it'll bounce and goes into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20. 4.32 to go first quarter. Our score 6-0. Aggies lead. Earlier today, Texas Tech defeated Baylor 26-11. And Maryland is leading Pittsburgh 13-7 in the fourth quarter. Pitt is unbeaten. Penn State leading Temple, but that's a close one by five in the fourth quarter of play. Auburn bouncing Tennessee by 20 in the fourth quarter in Ohio State over Iowa. You saw that one. The update from Brent Musburger, 7-3. Colorado State over Iowa State. There's an upset, 17-7. Oklahoma State trails by six. They've got a first down. Handoff goes to Sean Jones back in the lineup, number three. And it's a quick pickup of six. They, they're succeeding with this basic stuff on first down. They're doing fine. All they've got to do is just not turn the ball over and stay patient. That's one thing Texas A&M does not want them to do. They do not want them to call what we say in football terms, hammer at us, just pound us, try to power football. They don't want their defense on the field that long. And OSU, if they'll stay patient, they'll move the ball. They have a second down and three. That was a gain of seven for Sean Jones who has now picked up 36 yards already in eight carries. It'll be Jones again. He's got the opening and a first down out to the 35 yard line before Jeff Fuller made the tackle number 37. Up front, Ralph Partita and Paul Blair opened the hole on the right side. Take a look. Watch the two guards. They are very active players. The center, all the middle. They're very proud of the people in the middle of that offensive line. David Tucker is one of the best offensive linemen OSU has, and he has played exceptionally well. He's the most talented player. And the left side that time, John Sigelski, number 71, and Kevin Igo, 61, helped it. Penn State wins, breaking the three-game drought, 23-18. Jones again. And runs into some traffic, but he still picks up about three as Fuller and Payne make the tackle. Clemson bounces Georgia Tech 41-14, a final score today. 3.15 to go first quarter. Vern Lundquist and Steve Davis with you from Kyle Field at College Station. This great facility, begun in 1927, has been expanded two or three times, the most recent of which was in 1980. Second down, six. Six nothing, Aggies lead. Jones, fumble. But Oklahoma State, I believe, has, well, let's see. And again, there has been some celebrating by the Aggies, and they've got it. There's reason for celebration. Boy, the field position has been awesome for Texas A&M. And I think of some concern that they have not put it in. Tony Slayton, number three, got this one. A former wide receiver who's been converted to the defensive secondary. Hard not to get pumped up. Hard not to get intimidated. <laughs> First and ten Aggies. They've got the ball at the 40-yard line. Again, the double tight end set with one running back. George Smith gets the pitch out. It comes left. He's got two good blocks, but he's being strung out, chased and down at the 38-yard line by the corner, a tiny guy, Rod Fisher, 5'10", 190. George Smith, one of the most widely recruited athletes of his senior season a couple of years ago. The turnover is now at 2-0. He's out of Georgia and uh, was a little unhappy here. 
at some points last year and in the spring, but I think things have calmed down. There's George Smith, and he's on the bench right now as Jimmy Hawkins has come in the lineup. Why the tactic? Well, we'll talk about it, Steve, here in just a second. Jimmy Teal, number 23, in motion. Mazer hands it off to Jimmy Hawkins, and he gets nothing. Why the tactic of the double tight end set? What are they trying to accomplish? The Texas A&M? Yes. Well, when they're trying, they're trying to just feel out Oklahoma State and get everything of what they're trying to do to them offensively, at least defensively. Try to determine what alignments they can use and how they're going to play them. I think they're trying to uh, kind of manipulate the defense a little bit. And also maybe give a little bit of support to their running game. I don't, I, this is not the way they were supposed to start the football game. They were going to try to throw the ball. They're throwing team and they're running it. High formation this time on third down five. Blitz is coming from Oklahoma. Oh, threatened. Now Mazer drops back, sets up, pumps, fires it, caught. Jimmy Teal, first down at the 19-yard line. Adam Hines, number 14, makes the tackle. But a junior from Die Ball, Texas, number 23, gets his fourth catch of the year. And his first today. Texas A&M spends a tremendous amount of time in practice in being able to protect the passer. It is very difficult when you're running the football the way Texas A&M does for your lineman to make the adjustment from the pass, which is drop back, and the run. One you set, the other you fire off. Teal in motion on first down at the 19. Mazer, quick pitch, Hawkins. He gets a block on that right side by John Kellen, number 83, the extra tight end this time, and Ken Reeves, but it doesn't go for much as James Spencer, who is uh, the latest in a long line of outstanding linebackers at Oklahoma State, makes the stop. So it'll be second down and seven. This time, Rod Bernstein, number 29, has checked into the offensive lineup with George Smith for a and Temperature of 80 degrees is just great. And we're glad you're with us. Pitch out. Smith, block from Bernstein. Smith to the 10. Inside the 10, first and goal at the seven-yard line. John Washington, Adam Hines both got there too late. And Tommy Robison, who's a 295-pounder, 90-pounder at uh, right tackle, opened the hole that time, number 77. Another final Auburn rebounds from their loss to Texas last week by defeating Tennessee in Knoxville. And there are some fans who have made the trek down from Stillwater. Final 20 seconds, first quarter, 6-0 Aggies lead. And they've got a first and goal at the seven. Power eye formation this time. Hawkins weaves for a couple to the five. And that should be the final play of the first quarter. Rich Seiler, the junior transfer from Illinois. Tight end, and there's Jimmy Hawkins. They've got a 95-yard stride to the other end of the field. A&M has dominated the field goals and a couple of turnovers back in a moment. When people Welcome back to Kyle Field College Station. Vern Lundquist along with Steve Davis. Texas A&M leads 6-0 and they've got a second down and goal at the five. Rod Bernstein gets a block from George Smith, but he's going to be gang tackled for a loss back at the six-yard line. And that herd of Cowboys was led by number one, Rod Fisher. Texas A&M offensively oversizes Oklahoma State, but what Oklahoma State has is very quick, exceptional speed linemen and in their secondary, and that's the thing that's an advantage, and that's why that play appeared as it began to develop to the left side of the field. It appeared that he was going to make some yards, and all of a sudden, Texas, Oklahoma State speed, control, got there, made the play. Don Jones breaks and goes wide to the left. Two wide receivers are wide right, Bernstein and Jimmy Teal. Third and goal from the sixth, John Mazur, the quarterback. Blitz is coming. He gets a good block into the end zone. Tipped and in, intercepted. Adam Hines, a former quarterback. Number 14, a junior out of St. Louis, Missouri. And the Aggies are thwarted once again. They have had terrific field position. We talked about that. And Hines comes up with the first Oklahoma State turnover today. Oklahoma State has averaged getting it 80 yards away. The Aggies 41.3. That's coming up next Saturday on CBS Sports, the U.S. Women's Indoor Tennis Championship. Defending champion Barbara Potter, Sylvia Handica, Billie Jean King, Carling Bassett, all be competing for the national indoor title. So be sure to join us next Saturday at 4 o'clock Eastern Time for the singles final here on CBS Sports. There's Adam Hines. 
Number 14, a quarterback who came to Oklahoma State from Principia College in St. Louis, Missouri. Cowboys first and ten at their own point. Rusty Wilger, the quarterback. Jones may be gone. He is. Oklahoma State has quieted down. Take a look at the touchdown. Watch to the left, the right part of your screen. Two key blocks. Kelly Cook, 26, will make a block. Right there is one block. And the other block will be John Chesley, number 88, the tight end that makes another block that frees Sean Jones for the touchdown run. The finer points of the game, you've got to block them, and they did. 80-yard sprint for Sean Jones. And Oklahoma State can, you know, you talk about the, the patience aspect and all the things that we uh, mentioned earlier in the football game. They were rejected. They were a little bit frustrated, a little bit intimidated. And then all of a sudden, one big defensive play and then the long touchdown run. Adam Hines with the interception. Sean Jones with the touchdown run, his longest of the year. Previous had been 86. And check the unusual alignment now for Texas A&M as Kevin Godfrey gets set to kick off. They will shift. And now it gets set. Now the 12th man does not return the kicks. Here's the kick by Godfrey. It'll be Jeff Nelson who will let it come out to the 20-yard line on the touchback. Total offense in the game now for Oklahoma State, 124 yards to only 47 for the Aggies. And the Aggies with that great field position have had to settle for two field and goals. See, Oklahoma State never, they stopped themselves. They were never stopped. It was the fumbles, the turnovers, the mistakes. And, uh, and then Texas A&M really have not been able to sustain a drive. They've not gone any long distance. Now it's in a position Oklahoma State wants them to be in. 14-02 to go in the half. Ernest Anderson, far side. George Smith. To the 28-yard line. They might give him the 29. The tackle is made by James Hamm. Smith, a six-foot sophomore from Douglas, Georgia. Had a rather disappointing season last year, 240 yards as a freshman. And he's been splitting a lot of playing time this fall. They're still trying to find themselves as far as a running back. And the, so they're bouncing a lot of people around, and a lot of different folks are carrying the football right now. They need to get their running game under control. Double tight end set again. Hawkins to the 30, close for the first down. Tommy Robison, a senior from Portland, Texas, is uh, the best offensive lineman. The pros really like him. Number 77, let's watch him. There's a kind of a scramble-type block, just keeping the defender away from the play. The pros really like him. He's got the size, 6'4", 283. He is a big lineman. He is the only returning starter in the offensive line. It's first down, 10 a &M. They trail 7-6. Rod Bernstein for a couple. Tackle is made by Leslie O'Neill, a sophomore from Little Rock. Here's Tommy Robinson, number 77 again. Let's see what happens this time. He's taking the man one on. James Ham. uh-oh, a little headgear. Just try to keep him out of the play. He won the battle, just keeping him away from the football play. Keith Brown has checked in his nose guard now for Oklahoma State. Second down, nine. <laughs> Caught. Rod Bernstein with a nice diving catch at the 36-yard line. Bernstein highly recruited. He's from uh, Bryan, Texas, the hometown here. Just adjacent to College Station. And an Ernest Anderson fan. Maryland over Pittsburgh, a final 13 to 7. First defeat for Pitt. Third down, five. Bernstein changing at the line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth down. Rodney Harding and Leslie O'Neill collaborate for the tackle. Nebraska leading UCLA by 11 in the third quarter. Penn State defeated Temple, their first win of 1983. 
Near the conclusion of today's CBS Sports NCAA football broadcast, Steve and I will be selecting the Chevrolet MVP from each of the teams. Chevy donates a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. The MVP receives certificates from Chevrolet acknowledging their outstanding performances. First and 10 at the 26. The fullback, Kelly Cook, gets the handoff. A junior from Midwest City, Oklahoma, and fresh from his best game at Oklahoma State. He had a big game last week against Cincinnati. Well, one of the things Texas A&M is doing on this particular drive on the first play is they have they are generally a 3-4 defensive unit. Now they are in an eight-man front look trying to make sure that they can stop the pitch play. They've got to feel like that they can stop or control the running game, force Oklahoma State into an unfriendly environment of the pass. So you've got three defensive backs. Now they're in a four-deep secondary. Second down, six. Ball at the 30. Hilger will throw deep right side. Man is there, can't get it. Pretty good coverage from the cornerback on that left side, Billy Brown. The pass intended for Jamie Harris, whose brother Leonard played earlier today as a wide receiver for Texas Tech. Well, your alma mater is not having any problem. Tulsa University is a fine football team. They really have played well over the years, but Oklahoma is probably trying to rally back. Air Force leading BYU and Colorado over Oregon State, 21 zip in the second quarter. Our score here is seven to six. Oklahoma State leads Texas A&M. Rusty Hilger, junior quarterback from Oklahoma City, under his center David Tucker. Third down, six. Into the flat. This is going to be dangerous. The tackle is missed, and it's good. Close for the first down, up near the 37. Sean Jones made the catch, and Chris Lammers, number 93, finally with a tackle. Very smart defensive play calling. They came up in the first down play. They went to an eight-man front, expecting the run. They got the run. They put them into a tough second down situation. Two passes, what Oklahoma State doesn't generally want to be doing. And now it's going to be close as if they've gotten the first and 10. They will stretch the chain on the near side to see if Oklahoma State is going to be able to maintain possession. They will. Got it. First down, 10. Six yards. First and 10. Nebraska leading UCLA by 18 now, 28 to 10. It was 14 to 10 at the half. Fresh from their 84 points that they scored last week against Minnesota. Jimmy Johnson on the far side. First down and 10. Oklahoma State leads it with 10, 18 to go in the first half. They were three-point underdogs coming in. Sean Jones gets the handoff. He's been a busy man today. That will be his 13th carry already. And some folks from Oklahoma State have made the take down. Nine fifty-two to go first half. Rusty Hilger waits for the play to be brought in. And he may have to call timeout. They've got the 25 second clock working now. Tony Wilkins ran the play in and they do call time. So Hilger will talk it over with his coaching staff on the far side. Oklahoma State on the strength of an 80 yard run from Sean Jones has a one point lead at this time. An update on Nebraska. The Cornhuskers have scored again against UCLA. Turner Gill the backup fullback Tom Rathman. It is now 28 10 over UCLA. Let's go back now to Vern Lundquist. Thank you, Brent. Steve Davis, I don't know of a better one than Turner Gill. Boy, Turner Gill can do so many things with his ability to run the ball. He's just afraid he's going to run rather than throw. Second down and seven. Oklahoma State with a one-point lead. Hand off to Sean Jones. Gets a couple and a flag flies. Daryl Smith, number 39, made the tackle. And we'll see against whom the infraction will be called. If you join us late, the Aggies had great field position following a couple of fumbles and had two field goals. We've got a holding call against Oklahoma State. That gave them a 6-0 lead at the end of the first quarter, but early in the second quarter, Sean Jones playing in place of the injured Ernest Anderson. The All-American went 80 yards with a touchdown that has given the Cowboys a one-point lead. That is the third penalty against Oklahoma State. Here's the call. 10-yard penalty, replay second down. Call it a second down and 16. Oklahoma State 
with victories over North Texas 20 to 13. North Texas plays at Texas tonight. And of course, they defeated Cincinnati. Week after Cincinnati have defeated Penn State. Take a look at the total yardage so far. 80 yards of those came on one run at second and 16. Cornerbacks come up to play bump and run, draw play, left side. Sean Jones to the 31. It'll be third and a bunch. Jones with 14 carries for 135 yards now. Jeff Payne and Daryl Smith made the tackle on the last play. One of the AM Yale leaders. They are not referred to as cheerleaders here. And they mean yell when they yell. <laughs> Third down, 14, 8.55 to go in the first half. Oklahoma State with the ball at their own 32, with the exception of the 50-yard, 80-yard run, they've not been across midfield. Daryl Smith coming in, threatening a blitz. Flag is down, delay of game. Took longer than the 25 seconds. That cost him five more. It'll be third and 19. And the call from John McClinton. Dead ball foul. Delay of game. Offense. One of the things in Texas A&M making the transition from a 4-3 defensive style from last year to a 3-4 is just the number of athletes. They feel like they can find three good down people a little bit stronger, uh, easier than they can four. There's the third down conversion from Oklahoma State. Third and 19. Aggies threaten the blitz. Greg Berry drops back. It's a regular rush. Go deep left side. Dropped. It would have been enough for the first down. Bobby Riley, who was recruited as a quarterback from Stroud, Oklahoma, and uh, the young man who was there to help break it up was Darrell Austin, the sophomore from Fort Worth, and you look at Reveille 4. Again, oh, you really look at Reveille 4. Hey, listen, he'll bark at you. One of the things about Riley, he had a chance. The ball was hitting where it should have. He's 18 years old. Last year, he was playing for Stroud High School in Stroud, Oklahoma. A lot different than being down here. Billy Cannon back to return the punt of John Conway, who gets uh, to ride the breeze. Fair catch call for Cannon. Fumble. Oklahoma State has the turnover. Will Timmons, number 31, for Oklahoma State. Billy Cannon. Generally not known for a guy that's going to make those kind of mistakes. There's 31, Will Timmons, that opportunistic, falls on the football. Turn, what goes around, comes back around, doesn't it? Sound like Dwayne Thomas. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> Billy Cannon well, wished well, he had a chance to get His that great one. line was, what goes up must come out. <laughs> <laughs> never, I still haven't That was a that great out. line. <laughs> uh, the first down and 10, I'll tell you another one. Reverse, near side. Bobby Riley to the 28. Got the handoff from Sean Jones. Remember Dwayne Thomas sitting on the beach of Miami during Super Bowl V. <laughs> we walked up and said, what are you looking at? He said, New Zealand. <laughs> now think about it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to think about? I don't, I don't know. 7.40 to go in the first half. <laughs> I suppose if you could curve your eyesight, look long enough, you could see it. Second and one. Seven to six, Oklahoma State. With a chance to increase and pad their lead. Sean Jones, first down inside the 25. Rod Sadler, a freshman defensive end, number 99, and Jerry Bullitt, the linebacker, number 33, make the tackle. Good size contingent has made the trek down from Stillwater, Oklahoma. Boy, does Oklahoma State have a schedule coming up after this tough road trip. Tulsa at home, Nebraska at home, Oklahoma at home in the next three weeks. First down, 10. Cowboys lead 7-6. Hilger to Jones, he's got some room to run. Domingo Bryant chases him. He gets by Bryant and squirts inside the 20 to the 18. 
Ray Childress finally came back to make the tackle. Boy, it's Jones left and Jones right, just as you said it would be at the beginning of the show. Exactly. Jimmy Johnson, again, he really believes, and you've got to kind of fine-tune when you've got athletes. He says, you're not going to win football games right now with the athletes we've got on form. So we've got to go out and power football, high percentage, don't turn it over, don't make mistakes, and play good defense. Now they're in a situation because of a mistake at Texas a to do something. Second down, five. At the Aggie, 18. Pitch out. I'll tell you who made the play was Domingo Bryant, the strong safety, number six, who forced it inside, and Ray Childress was there to make the tackle. Bryant came on a blitz from the safety position and forced the, the runner inside of him where all the traffic was, and that's what caused the play not to be as successful. Well, I like Jimmy Johnson. You know, I, he was at Oklahoma when I was there, and he's uh, an interesting coach and one of the most enthusiastic men in college coaching, and he's really done an excellent job at Oklahoma State turning well, things around. Port Arthur High School was an all-conference guard at Arkansas in the national championship team in 64. Third down, three. High set. Passes into the left flat, caught. Jamie Harris, touchdown for the kid from McKinney. His third touchdown catch this year. And he beat Darrell Austin on the near side. Kevin Igo comes over to give him a congratulatory hug. He started out at Texas Tech. And then sat out a year after transferring. So this is his first year at Oklahoma State. The kick from Larry Roach is good. It's Hilger to Harris for the touchdown that comes with five and a half to go in the first half. Here's the replay. It appears there was a blitz, so they had to go single coverage. Austin on Harris. Let's see the angle. There's not even close. He doesn't have an angle. He doesn't have the receiver out in front of him, and that's the touchdown. I think it was a blitz to the other side, causing him to go man on man. And it, Poor position, not even close. Just a day in the sun for Ruster Hilger. Tomorrow, many of you will see an NFL doubleheader on CBS Sports in the early game, the New Orleans Saints against the Dallas Cowboys, a team the Saints have beaten only once in 67. Then in the doubleheader game, the Washington Redskins will meet the Seattle Seahawks or the Los Angeles Rams and the New York Jets. It all starts with the NFL today. Check local listings for the games and times in your area tomorrow on CBS Sports. Bert, I did a little analysis right before the football game. Texas A&M has had one 12-play drive. The rest of them are four, five, six times uh, play drives, and that's what Oklahoma State can take advantage of now, make him go a long way. They've not got a good, solid running game and a passing game. You better be high percentage and complete a lot of them, and they've not so far in this football game done that. End zone view as Kevin Godfrey kicks off with the win. Joey Harris waits for it at the goal line and has it now at the 10. Runs right into the tackle at the 13-yard line. We are live at Kyle Field in College Station. CBS Sports and NCAA football. The Oklahoma State Cowboys leading the Aggies of Texas A&M 14-6 with 5.15 to go in the first half. I'm Vern Lundquist along with former Oklahoma quarterback Steve Davis. As Oklahoma State tries to go 3-0 in this 83 season before heading back home, and the Aggies try and silence the critics with a victory, they are 1-1. One one. Not a bad day to ride the crane in the sun at the end zone, huh? High formation for Texas A&M. Mazur hands it off left side to Rod Bernstein. And Harry Roberts, number six, comes up to help Rod Fisher, number one, with the tackle near the 20. I'm a little surprised they've not thrown the ball like we thought they would. I uh, really, the short passing game, the high percentage type passing game that, you know, I, I think that Jackie Sherrill and the offensive coaches are trying to get implemented here at Texas A&M, and they've not really used uh, Mazur's ability and talent. John Mazur from Canoga Park, California. 3.6 is a biochemistry major. He's going to be a dentist someday. Second down, two. Big hole. Bernstein, first down plus out near the 26. Leslie O'Neill, number 99, and Harry Roberts, number six, make the tackle. 
This is a maturing and developing offensive line, and we were told for the Aggies the big problem they have is in their run block. That's right. That's the frustration. They have to spend so much time in the passing, pass blocking time, because it's different. You've got to set. You've got to be patient. Whereas in running, you've got to explode. You've got to spend a lot of time doing it. It's hard to make the transition. Mazur will throw on first down. Into the flat left side. Caught at the 30. Up to the 35. Rich Seiler. There's a JC transfer, or rather a transfer to a transfer. A kid from USC throwing to a kid from Illinois. Rich Seiler played at Illinois before transferring down to Texas A&M. Matter of fact, his father, Herbert, fought Muhammad Ali back in 1962. Didn't know I knew that, huh? No, I did not. <laughs> Don't know how significant it is either. <laughs> no. <laughs> First down and 10. Bernstein gets bumped, loses yardage back to the 33. That time it was Warren Thompson, the sophomore number 91, who was a free safety in junior college last year at Independence Junior College. And also played fullback. They think he's the best athlete in the defensive line, number 91. He's a sophomore from Dale City, Virginia, and was not projected as a starter, but came on so strong in the fall that just before the opening game against North Texas, he moved into one of the starting spots in the front line. Second down 12, 319 to go. Clock working against the Aggies now, and they trail 14 to 6. Rollout, sprint pass, fired deep, caught. Not enough for the first down, but Jimmy Hawkins does make the grab at the Aggie 43. Jackie Sherrill, 38 years of age, previous coaching experience, of course, at Pitt, where they won the national title, and at Washington State, where he was 3-8. and eight. And the relationship between Jackie and Jimmy Johnson goes all the way back to the days at Iowa State in 68 when Jimmy Johnson was his boss, in effect. That's right, and then when Jackie went to Pitt, he hired Jimmy Johnson to come up and be on his staff, and uh, they've got quite a relationship. Third down, three. Three ten to go in the half. Pitch out. Not enough for the first down. Ron Bernstein. It'll be fourth down, and Kyle Stewart's going to come on and kick into the wind. There's 40-year-old Jimmy Johnson out of Port Arthur, Texas. We're talking about the relationship of the two men. They'd still like to beat each other. <laughs> They'd like to beat the other one. Kyle Stewart is on to punt, and Bobby Riley almost blocked. Harry Roberts came through and almost got it. Gets an A&M roll back inside the 15, near the 10, and limps to a stop at the 10-yard line. Does so with 2.32 to go in the half, a 46-yard punt. Colorado State leading Iowa State. That is now a fourth-quarter score. And Brigham Young over the Air Force 12-7. The Air Force defeated Texas Tech earlier this year. Gave you that Oklahoma 28-0 over Tulsa. That's Steve's alma mater. My alma mater's at home tonight. They got a big one. Texas Lutheran at home against Washita Baptist. So Cliff Harris and I, the Cowboys, will argue about that one. Hand off. Sean Jones, not much there. Jerry Bullitt, number 33, who has a great name for a linebacker, makes the tackle. 2.17 to go, and the clock running. 80 degrees at kickoff. It's just a gorgeous September afternoon. 14-6. That guy's team is not in the lead. Jackie Sherrill's Aggies trail. Jimmy Johnson's Oklahoma State Cowboys. Two minutes exactly. Cook, the fullback, gets a rare call, and that'll bring up a third down. A&M has, uh, I would think, uh, might be thinking about using a timeout to kill the clock right about now, Steve. And Jackie desperately, uh, Jackie Sherrill desperately wants a timeout. He's trying to get it. He finally gets the attention of his defensive captain. Greg Berry will come over and talk to Jackie Sherrill, number 48. 137 to go in the half, and Rusty Hilger, the junior from Oklahoma City almost died in December from a bleeding ulcer. They had to give him transfusions. Jackie Sherrill. He looks a little upset. I think he is. Right now, Oklahoma State, all you've got to think of your Oklahoma State is just don't make any mistakes. If you're going to have to punt the football, just get it away clear. 
know, it's third down right now, but if you do have to punt it, don't make any mistakes and let Texas A&M try to take it a long distance. Just challenge them to take it a distance. I think that's what Jimmy Johnson's been trying to tell his team on the sidelines. Hey, we haven't stopped anybody but ourselves. Greg Berry talking with R.C. Slocum, whose son Sean is a freshman walk-on here at A&M. R.C. was the defensive coordinator under John Robinson at Southern Cal for a year or two, having left here and then come back under Jackie Sherrill and was in, in some small measure responsible for John Mazur's decision to come here. I think uh, probably uh, greater than R.C. Slocum wants to admit. <laughs> Jackie Sherrill in his second year at AM. 97 seconds to go in the half. 14-6 Oklahoma State. Third down. Huge yardage. That might be enough. No, it won't. They'll spot the ball down at the 19-yard line. It's a half, half a yard short. Scott Polk, number 87, and Greg Berry make the tackle. 42 to 10. Nebraska, are, we, are they strong or what? I don't know. It might take two teams to beat Nebraska. <laughs> we'll have scores and highlights coming up at halftime, plus a profile of Notre Dame coach Jerry Faust. That's on the NCAA today at halftime. Plus the CBS News update. That's about two minutes away. Of course, tonight on CBS, it'll be Notre Dame at Miami, live at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 8 o'clock Central Time on CBS. John Conway on the kick, and Billy Cannon, who has a 23.2 yards per return average for the year, is back to return it at the 30-yard line. And he returned one 60 yards for a touchdown last week. He'll have a chance to run this one back. Plenty of room at the 29. He's got 4-4 four, four speed. To the 46-yard line, a lot of time left, a minute 13. 53-yard kick, 26 on the counter punch. Will Timmons, number 31, made the tackle. So they do have time, but they have had problems getting it in the end zone. They've had to settle for Alan Smith twice already today. One thirteen to go in the half. Aggies trail by eight. Five-man rush. Mazer in trouble. And a flag is down on the far side. John Washington. That is the second time they have gotten to Mazer today. And the Cowboys have 14 quarterback sacks coming in. John Washington, a sophomore from Houston. I promise you that time Oklahoma State got after that Texas A&M line. I mean, they had four people rushing and they were just throwing bodies left and right and trying to make something happen and they got to the passer. There's the 12th man. Or one of them. See another one down. That's Lance Holman, uh, Larry Holman right there that we're zooming in on right now. His uncle Curly is uh, on the staff here at A&M. He's from Alabama. This is like old home week for you, Vern. <laughs> it's fun doing a game at home, or close to. Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. Decline. Decline. Second down. Second down. Holding call is declined. Holding call on AM because of the quarterback sack. Coming up at halftime, Jerry Faust will be profiled by Pat O'Brien on the NCAA today, plus a CBS News update. Second down, 17. into the flat. George Smith being chased, caught, dropped at the 49-yard line by Rodney Harding, number 42, and James Spencer, number 85. You just have to give credit to Oklahoma State's defense. I mean, they're keeping them under control. They're giving a good blitz on Mazur, the quarterback, and then they're being able to break on the ball when the reception's made. I mean, you cannot fault their defense right now. They did a great job on that pass, and I'm thinking back to the fact that they are number one in the country against the run. They have only given up 35 yards per game against the run, and Jimmy Johnson said, well, yeah, but we've been playing passing teams. That's right. Well, they have done a great job against the run today, as well as the pass. And really, early in the football game, they were so intimidated. I mean, really, they, hearing the Aggie song, you know, played in front of you has to intimidate you a little bit. And they started out very shaky, but they pulled it back together, controlling the game. Jim Spencer follows Mike Green and Ricky Young, among the great linebackers at Oklahoma State. 
Spencer to show you how this defense has been rebuilt. He is the only player on Oklahoma State's defensive team that is playing in a position that he played last year. Everybody else is in new spots. That's to the credit of Jimmy Johnson and his defensive staff. Spencer is a senior, another Texan from Garland. Jimmy Johnson, 40 years of age. His son, Brent, is a freshman at the University of Texas football team and made the tackle on the opening kickoff last week against Auburn. Jimmy didn't get to see it because he was watching us do Indiana, Kentucky. Third down and 15. 46 seconds to go in the half. Mazer intercepted. Spencer near side to the 50. And out of bounds at the Aggie 43. That is the first time this year that John Mazer has been intercepted. And he has been sacked for the first times this year already in the first half. It was intended for Shea Walker. Spencer gets the turnover, which are now 3-2. Yeah. I don't want to be critical. Mazur dropped back, had the plenty of time around him, threw it right to James Spencer. I mean, just flat out threw it to James Spencer like he's playing catch with him. Now with just over a half a minute remaining, Oklahoma State might want to try and pad its lead. They've got two timeouts left. Hilger. Almost intercepted by Billy Brown, one of the midgets who plays cornerback for the Aggies. He's only 5'7", 160. And has one pick off this year. Aggie turnovers have all come in the second quarter after Oklahoma State fumbled it away twice in the first 15 minutes. And we've got 28 seconds to go in the half. Larry Roach is an outstanding place kicker for Oklahoma State. As a junior, he already holds all of the school records, and he's getting warmed up on the sideline. They give, may give him a long shot. Way down deep, Harris is open. Caught, touchdown! Jamie Harris, second of the day. He wandered away from the defensive back, Billy Brown. concentration by Billy Brown number 21 he's got him covered he's all over him watching Pilger's going to be trying to scramble around Brown's got him covered and then he just relaxed and let him get behind him touchdown oh you can see it beginning here's Larry Roach with a kick it is good and like lightning Oklahoma State has put 21 points on the board here in the second quarter and Jamie Harris, the transfer from Texas Tech, whose brother Leonard is a starter there this year, and played this afternoon, has his second reception of the day. What happened, I, I really believe this, is when Billy Brown saw Hilger forced out of the pocket, he just relaxed a little bit, didn't pay attention to what was happening. All of a sudden, Jamie Harris just began to add yardage between him. He's in the end zone. Hilger sees him. Direct shot, touchdown. You can't yep. ever, you can never let up like that. You just can't. You've got to be concentrating and never anticipate what the quarterback might do. You've got him. He's in your coverage area. Stay on him. An 80-yard run by Sean Jones and two touchdown tosses from Rusty Hilger to Jamie Harris have given Oklahoma State three TDs in the second quarter and a 21-6 lead over the Aggies. Kevin Godfrey from Ponca City, a junior, ready to kick off. Joey Harris, Jeff Nelson, Tony Slayton, or D. Jimmy Hawkins at the 20. This one will not be returned. It'll go into the AM band. Ray Childress. Now have your attention, please. Go on. Well, oh, I know what he's feeling. Frustration. frustration, you're out there, the, the heat, everything that you're going through, you're trying to concentrate on your assignments, or you just feel like, you know, what are we doing wrong? You're so frustrated, you can't control the whole game yourself as one player. Now John Mazur brings him back. It'll be first down and 10 with 19 seconds to go in the half. 
four-man front for Oklahoma State, and the Aggies will be content to go in and try and regroup at halftime. And it will be a tremendous task for them to do so, don't you think? Yeah, well, now Oklahoma State's got the advantage. They know that Texas A&M's got to throw the football, so you can play a little bit different, smarter defensive strategy. So there's the end of the first half. Oklahoma State shocks this crowd at Kyle Field and themselves, I think. I think you're right. I think you're very right. With a 21-point eruption. Our score is 21 to 6. We'll be back with Brennan Error from New York with scores and highlights after this word about an upcoming show on CBS and a message of your local station. We are back at Kyle Field in College Station, Texas, where Oklahoma State has erupted for three second quarter touchdowns and a 21 to 6 lead over the host team, Texas A&M. And Steve, I, I'm just really in a state of shock myself over what's happened here in the first half. Well, Texas A&M had everything going for them in the first half. Oklahoma was making mistakes. They were going short yardage uh, distances to get scores. I think that's the point. They did not put it in the end zone. They had to kick two field goals early in the ball game. They should be getting touchdowns by running the ball or throwing passes. They didn't. Then all of a sudden, Oklahoma State gets confidence and then a lack of concentration on the part of the defensive secondary, and Oklahoma State's back in the football game and way ahead now. If you'll recall, A&M had a 6-0 lead and a third down and five. I called James Spencer's uh, interception the first of the year against Mazur. In effect, it was Adam Hines in the end zone who made the interception. And after that, things just turned around for Oklahoma State. They brought it out to the 2180, and uh, they have dominated since then. Total lack of concentration by Texas A&M, and I really am surprised. Offensively, they're not really into their game plan, I don't think at all. They're not utilizing their passing game. Now, in the second half, they get in a position where they've got to throw. Oklahoma State can play a small smart defensive football game. You can take some chances because you anticipate to catch up, they've got to throw the football. Oklahoma State coaches have got to be surprised. Down on the field, of course, under the direction of Lieutenant Colonel Joe Haney, the famed and muchly understood why Texas A&M band. One of the great precision marching units in the country guard and I mean Kelly Cook and just breaks and uses feet that's why we'd say there's very little drop-off between Sean Jones and Ernest Anderson 80 yards after the big turnaround of the interception in the end zone that's what turned Oklahoma State on its winning way Sean Jones with that 80 yarder gave them a 7-6 lead and then the transfer out of McKinney Texas an all-purpose athlete named Jamie Harris teamed up with Rusty Hilger. Again, a total lack of concentration. I, I watch him. He gets forced out of the pocket. Billy Brown's trying to get on him, but he's away from him. He was thinking about run. All of a sudden, there's Hilger sees him wide open, the back of the end zone, touchdown. That made it 21-6, to six, and that's where we stand right now in Oklahoma State with 268 yards. Sean Jones, 152 of those yards, and of course, 80 came on the run run. And keep in mind, he's playing in place of an All-American named Ernest Anderson, who uh, is not going to get a chance to play today. Uh, he may not want to play today when he's got Sean Jones doing as well. I think another statistic is the balance that Texas A&M's got to only have the yardage. Mazur's not been effective at all today. That's been a good rush by Oklahoma State, good defensive coverage when they were throwing the football, and then just the lack of consistency in their game plan. John Mazur is 6 out of 11, but only for 45 yards so far, so that's not going to get you much... Uh, much uh, time in, in the end zone. No, and that coming out in the second half, they're going to be at a disadvantage. They've got to throw. Now Oklahoma State can play smart Reserve. defensive football, Vegas. which is to their advantage right now. Remaining. It will be interesting to see how Jackie Sherrill's troops can regroup because they trail by 15. I think they are in a state of shock, and we're certainly surprised. It's 21 to 6 at halftime. Back in a moment. From its beginnings, Oklahoma State University has dedicated its service to meet society's needs. A modern example. OSU mechanical engineers are studying the human knee as a mechanical device. The engineers plan to design artificial ligaments and knee implants, which will put incapacitated knees back in use. OSU's role in our high technology society enhances personal well-being and our national productivity. This is A&M, an exclusive presentation of CBS Sports, is sponsored by Chevrolet. America is on the move, and Chevrolet is supplying the wheels. Chevrolet and you taking charge. Pabst Brewing Company, brewers of Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. For the real taste of beer, Pabst is the place. And by Owens Corning Fiberglass Corporation, makers of Owens Corning's Pink Fiberglass Insulation. 
We're at Kyle Field in 1983. The original Kyle Field was begun in 1911 and named after Edson Edward Jackson Kyle. Class of 1899, the Dean of Agriculture here at the school for many, many years and Chairman of the Athletic Council. And this is as it looked. And Dr. Kyle donated the funds for the original Kyle Field, cost approximately $500 and seated 500 folks. Did you see the CBS crew up in the top there? <laughs> I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> and this Kyle Field was begun in 1927 at uh, a seating capacity of 42,000, expanded in 67 to 55,000. The artificial surface laid in 1970, and then it was expanded to its current capacity of 72,000 in 1979. We've got uh, somewhere between 55 and 60,000 today. It is a magnificent facility, and uh, among the many traditions is the midnight yell before home games, and last night as many as 20,000 or 30,000 gathered in the end zone here. Jimmy Johnson was not among them. He and his team were down in Huntsville, 40 miles away, spending a quiet night. And it has served them well because they lead 21 to 6. And that was one of the purposes they were in Huntsville, to stay away from all the activities that are going on, on on campus. They practiced very early yesterday morning, away from all the uh, tradition that's here at Texas A&M. And these are the freshmen who come out and form the line for the uh, squad to come through. I thought those were seniors. Are they seniors? I'm sorry. Well, we're we're going to mess up a tradition <laughs> right here. Right. <laughs> yeah, you got to. That's right. They have to prove their seniors, or they can't uh, get down there. They've got to, I guess, carry their transcripts. I'm this has sure. got to be one of the greatest schools in the world to go to school because, I mean, they have a lot of fun down here. <laughs> I don't know. They will. There must be 2,000 of them down there. 2,000 seniors, and the, and the team comes out and runs. To, now that kid's a senior, that's and I'm a grandpa. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Alan Smith is getting ready to kick off. I think we've got a 14-year-old genius who just snuck on the field. Alan Smith will kick off for AM. We're underway with the second half. And the 12th man will not have a chance to make a tackle because Smith again kicks it nine yards back. Harry Roberts will walk over to the sideline. First down, 10. Oklahoma State with a 21-6 lead. Now, if you're Oklahoma State, you must concentrate on the very little things. Early in the football game, they were in the same field position. Fumbles. Don't fumble. Just control the ball, the clock. Keep it away from Texas A&M. Make them try to show you they can put together a sustained drive. Challenge them. First play of the second half. Good to have you with us. Rusty Hilger, junior from Oklahoma City. Pitch out, Sean Jones. The top game of his career was 183 yards. It came in his sophomore season against San Diego State. He was out last year, Sean Jones was, with a hardship after injuring a leg in the first game. And now the lefty, John Mazur, warming up. His parents, John and Mary Mazur, drove over from their home in California to Scottsdale to watch the game on television today. And he asked us to tell them thanks. Hand off to Kelly Cook, the fullback up the middle. Again, not much there. It'll be third and long as Scott Polk, number 87, made the tackle. Uh, junior out of Dallas. Ray Childress, 14 tackles a week ago. And a big day today. He's a junior, 6'6", 271 pounds. Texas A&M does not respect the ability of Rusty Hilger, the quarterback, to throw the ball consistently. If they can shut him down on the run, they feel like they've got an advantage when he's throwing the ball. Third and six. Domingo Bryant up on the line, the strong safety. Now one of the linebackers drops off. Hilger on the roll, gets a good block. He'll run it. And he's got the first down as he gets it out and is sandwiched at the 33-yard line by Bobby Brown and Wayne Asbury. Tackler number six, Domingo Bryant, and number 21, Billy Brown. That is an important first down play for Hilger to be able to roll out. Receivers were covered, and as a quarterback, which Texas A&M doesn't expect him to run at all, and then to get the first and 10 for Oklahoma State. Just underway, third quarter, first and 10 at the 33. Jones, for about four. Out to the 37-yard line. Tackle made by Ray Childress and Domingo Bryant. Oh, 
that'll bring up a second down and six. On the ground in the first half, 160 yards rushing for Oklahoma State. And that man had 156 right now on 20 carries. Man is open, wide open. At the 50-yard line, the catch made by Jamie Harris. And that'll move the chains again as Wayne Asbury was covering. In 1980, Harris caught 24 passes at uh, Texas Tech and then became disenchanted his next year. For the day, you saw the stats on Rusty Hilger. Four out of seven, but two have been for touchdowns. And it's another first down Oklahoma State with 12 and a half to go third quarter. Jones for two. Scott Polk, number 87, makes the tackle. Texas A&M on first down situations in this drive are getting in an eight-man front with three deep secondary, trying to get just what they've got right now, try to create a second down long situation and get a little bit more of a predetermined idea of what Oklahoma State's got to do. It'll either be the sweep play or they'll have to go throw the ball. They're trying to get a little bit of leverage, Texas A&M right now. Second and eight. Jones flag down at the 45 yard line that time it was Scott Polk number 87 again Iowa State defeats Colorado State by four up in Ames Missouri over Utah State bouncing back with a victory for Warren Powers group by seven and a 32 point win for Nebraska over UCLA well it's getting a little tighter up in Norman Mr. Davis Oh. <laughs> Brigham Young over here. That was a wounded O. 12-7. <laughs> uh, well, they're, they're, you know, they're frustrated up there. Oh, look at this. Kansas over USC by 10 in the third quarter. Go Second Mike Godfrey. <laughs> <laughs> the Jayhawks, here's the call. Clipping on the offense. Repeat second down. Cougars are playing the Ducks out in Oregon. It's seven to six Houston. And Kentucky leading Tulane, trying to win their fourth in a row. Wouldn't that be a classic? What would Jerry Claiborne's gone through there? And Iowa on top of Ohio State, 10-7, third quarter. It's 21-6 here, and it's now second down and 21. Sean Jones gets the block from Kelly Cook. One more tackle, and he might be gone for a bunch, but as it is, he picks it up to the 44-yard line, and Wayne Asbury made the stop. That's 176 yards today for Sean Jones. And Ernest Anderson, I'm sure, on the sideline applauding the effort. That's right at what Ernest Anderson averaged last year, 170. Of course, this is a tailback-oriented offense. They feature that man. Third down, five. Jones all the way inside the 30 to the 29. They did a great deceptive job that time, Steve, as, as Hilger had two men going out deep left side, and then he looked that way, and at the last minute, and uh, Mr. Davis can now sigh without the wounded O. Uh, yes, they won another one. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 28-18. <laughs> Tulsa will be at Oklahoma State next week. Boy, I tell you, Oklahoma State took advantage. Somebody busted at Texas A&M because there was nobody near Sean Jones that time. Cowboys are driving on the Aggies in their lead, 21-6. Sean Jones. Block from Kelly Cook. He's got 12 more. Three, and a flag Jones. is down on the far side of the field that might Apple wipe out 16, Wayne that 12-yard game. And Wayne Asbury made the tackle if it stands. Illegal procedure of the call against Oklahoma State. That will wipe out that first down game. And Ken Zachary has stepped in to take Sean Jones' place in the next uh, next play. One of the mismatches we're seeing, the offensive guards 
of Oklahoma State. They're pulling a lot on the sweet play. That's the way Nebraska runs their sweet play, and they've got a mismatch. Let's listen to the official. Illegal formation on the offense. Repeat, first down. The mismatch of those big offensive guards of Oklahoma State against the smaller cornerbacks is why Oklahoma State's moving the ball down the field right now. A very impressive drive. Oklahoma State has six penalties for 55 yards. It's first and 15 at the Aggie 35-yard line. Kenny Zachary gets a hit from Jeff Payne, and another flag is down. Payne, number 49, a senior from Richardson, who was a tight end for A&M a year ago. Zachary is a sophomore out of Sepulpa, Oklahoma. And we've got yet one more penalty against the Cowboys. It had been a very impressive drive to open the third uh, quarter until they got the thumb on the self-destruct button here. So many times in football, it is not you being stopped, it's you stopping yourself. I mean, it's time and time again we see it in every football game we do. It's not so many times how many big plays you make, it's how you avoid mistakes or turnovers or opportunities that stop yourself. John McClintock is our referee. Let's listen in. Holding on the offense. Repeat first down. First down, 23. And the ball at the Aggie, 43. Elger to Harris. Out of bounds at the 34. Billy Cannon, number 22, was close by. We have not heard his name brought up much today, Steve. I tell you, the Texas A&M coaches did not, they told me they did not expect or respect the ability of Hilger to throw passes like that. Cannon has been a strong safety and free safety. He ought to be able to make that play. That time a little crossing route underneath, and he made the play to Jamie Harrison. Second down, 14, Oklahoma State. Harris again to the 22, just two yards short of the first down. Tony Slayton, a sophomore from Decatur, Georgia, wearing number three, made the tackle. So what's the action of the guards? I go number 61 and Partita number 60, uh, number 50. They're asked to do a lot of different things, to work on the pass, to make the transition when you're running the football in the sweep, to dropping back and setting and being a patient blocker on the pass play to a lot of transition and it's a pressure position to be in and you've got the kind of offense Oklahoma State has. Malcolm Lewis, Jamie Harris to wide left. Third down two. Sean Jones, I go in front. First down, Oklahoma State. They overcame a first and 23. Part of it is Texas A&M's defensive secondary is not they're not playing good football. They're not covering. They're not getting on the receiver. They're playing very, very soft. And there's not much happiness among those folks. Ernest Anderson. Just a day in the sun for him, but he wants to get back into action. He's from Texas and wanted to play in front of his family today. But perhaps next week. Jones inside the 15. Mike Ashley, the linebacker, made the tackle. That Aggie lineup now has Rod Sadler in it. David Dowell, number 97, has come in at nose guard. Ray Childers, number 53. Jeff Payne, Jeff Fuller, Mike Ashley, and Billy Cannon, the linebackers. And the secondary, Darrell Austin, Tony Slayton, Domingo Bryant, and Wayne Asbury. They were worried about those cornerbacks giving run support, and they've not been able to do it. Second down, five. Oklahoma State has had the ball since the opening kickoff of the second half. Jones. Close for the first inside the 10. And Sean Jones has a personal career best right now as he has rushed 26 times for 190 yards. He's not through. We've got eight minutes to go in the third quarter. 8.03 exactly remaining. Go! 
One thing about Jimmy Johnson, I was in Stillwater on Thursday, and he talked about the things that you go through as a coach to turn around a program. He came to Oklahoma State, as we're looking at Sean Jones. Came to Oklahoma State. They were on probation the first two years he was there. Could not go to a bowl game. Could not be on television. Turn things around. And he said, you've just got to go with what you've got. We've got to play power football, high percentage, and good defense. Let somebody else make the big plays and mistakes. And that's what they're doing today. First and goal, Oklahoma State. 7.50 to go in the third quarter. Incomplete. Jamie Harris. Only 5'10", 165. A little sprite. Great speed. Elusive moves. Had the ball been just a little bit closer, I mean, he would have been a touchdown. I mean, again, Billy Brown, number 21, who gave up a big touchdown in the second, in the first half. Watch this. Watch where the ball's got to be. If it's there, he's open. That's a touchdown. He's five yards away from him. That's not defensive secondary play. That was a touchdown. Had he caught the ball. Well, so much cushion. This will be the 15th play in this drive. Sean Jones at about the four. Rod Sadler, Domingo Bryant make the tackle. Jones, who turned things around in the second quarter with an 80-yard touchdown dash that gave Oklahoma State a 7-6 lead, which they have not lost. And a pop uh, about which they're going to increase here in a moment. Sean Jones was a little overweight in 1982, but he's gotten in shape this year. <laughs> Third down and goal. Double tight end set. Barry Hanna, John Chesley. Hilger looks for Harris, finds him incomplete. And Billy Brown was a little bit out of shape and out of position. Domingo Bryant had forced, and Hilger didn't have all the time he wanted to throw it. The important thing is what the drive has accomplished. There, as you look at the clock, 6.57. They've had the ball the entire third quarter thus far. They have kept the Texas A&M defense out on the field. The question will be how Texas A&M's offense is able to sustain a drive. Larry Roach, junior from Dallas. He got it. From 20 yards away. Larry Roach has helped increase the Oklahoma State lead, which is now 24 to 6. Well, Steve, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Notre Dame and Miami will be home in time to watch it. 9 o'clock live Eastern tonight as CBS presents an NCAA doubleheader. Oklahoma State and AM this afternoon, and then Notre Dame, Miami, live at 9 o'clock. Seems like there's a lot of coaches in college football this year that have to kind of justify their existence and why they're at certain school. Jerry Fowles has got to have a pressure game tonight. Oklahoma State went 76 yards in 17 plays, and they chewed 8.07 off the clock. Here's the kick. Aggies have Joey Harris as the middleman of three back. He takes it at the four. Gets a good block and then slips and falls at the 12-yard line. That block from Domingo Bryant, or Jeff Nelson, rather, and Chris Rockins, number 37, was downfield to make the tackle. Well, there is a graphic demonstration of that long drive, a 21-yard field goal by Larry Roach, has increased the margin to 24-6. And A&M has simply got to, in a rather desperate way, get something going right now. John Mazur, junior quarterback from California, will throw on first down. Into the flat for Rick Seiler. It is overthrown. And fairly good coverage over there from Harry Roberts, number six. Again, Oklahoma State is in a perfect position now. They know that Texas A&M has got to throw the football. They've got to put it in the air. And so now they can drop back and play halves and five under all these neat, fancy coverages and be able to put Texas A&M in a situation that uh, they're going to have to throw into coverage a lot. A lot of people will be around the ball. A&M with 93 yards, total offense, first half. Second down and 10. As a man open, Jimmy Teal, number 23, first down at the 31. James Ham, number 40. There's a young Oklahoma State there. <laughs> How cute can you get, huh? Kansas leading Southern Cal 20 to 10 in the second quarter. And that is at Southern Cal. Kentucky trying to go 4-0 after a 0-10 in one year a year ago at Brigham Young leading Air Force by 13. 
Jimmy Hawkins has come into the lineup for the Aggies. They have a first down and 10 at the 31. Triple coverage for Teal, intercepted. Picked off by Adam Hines, his second of the day, and he's got a lot of room to run it back to the 42-yard line. That is the third interception of the day, the second for Adam Hines, Oklahoma State, as an 18-point lead. 11.05 p.m., the hospital for... There's a happy Adam Hines after a second interception that gives Oklahoma State the football again. Watch the replay. Mazur throwing into coverage. They're only rushing four men. Jimmy Till is the intended receiver, number 23. Adam Hines, 14, goes up. You see the three men around it. It was a forced pass, trying to make a big play. Turnover. Adam Hines was a starting quarterback a year ago, now on the defensive backfield. Who else? Sean Jones. I've said that 28 times before today. Wayne Asbury makes a tackle, and this one doesn't pick up much. It'll be second down and 10. Jones closing in on a 200-yard day, has 194 so far. Looks like a carbon copy of an Ernest Anderson afternoon. Second and 10. Oklahoma State leads it 24-6. Jamie Harris drops the ball. Now let's go to Brent Musburger in New York for an NCAA update. Burn it is now Kentucky all over Tulane. The Wildcats are en route to their fourth straight victory. Curtis Cochran with the latest touchdown, 17-7, back to Burn. Okay, Brent, thank you very much. Our score is 24 to 6. And of course, Steve, you and I saw Kentucky last week, and they've got a good football team. They really do, and they've got two weeks to get ready for all of them, too. Open date next week. Third down 10, Oklahoma State. Draw play. Jones. And the Aggie defense comes alive. Well, I think if they had any hopes of getting back in this ball game, they had to stop Oklahoma State right then and there. Exactly. I, I really am so confused in the sense of the way Texas A&M is playing in the secondary. There's so much cushion. Maybe they're afraid to give up a big play. I know that's a point, but you better start taking a few chances when you're behind like they are right now. John Conway on to punt. He has previous kicks of 31, uh, a 30.5 average. Couldn't find it. Billy Cannon with a fair catch at the 11th. Billy Cannon, Jr., that's a 32-yard kick. So the Aggies get it back, but they need to light a fire. They trail by 18 with 5.19 to go in the third quarter. A lot of great names next Saturday at the U.S. Women's Indoor Tennis Championships. Billie Jean King, Carling Bassett, defending champion Barbara Potter, Sylvia Hanneke, all competing for the national indoor title. Join us next Saturday at 4 o'clock Eastern for the singles final here on CBS. John Mazur. And the flags will kill the play before it gets uh, gets going. Offside, A and M. They are shooting themselves in the feet. And Jimmy Hawkins now comes in for George Smith as the ball is walked back to the seven-yard line. Encroachment on the offense. Still first down. First down 15. Oklahoma State fumbled twice in the opening quarter. AM recovered them both, but could get only field goals. They had a 6-0 lead. An 80-yard touchdown run in the second quarter, following an interception in the end zone. But Oklahoma State on top, and they have been on top since. 24-6 right now. Hand off to Hawkins for about one. He gets it out near the nine-yard line. Rodney Harding, number 42, and James Hamm, number 40, make the tackle. He's got the best of both worlds. <laughs> Conflict of interest. Yes. Second down and 13. 4.50 to go third quarter. And the team in Maroon in a state of shock right now. They trail by 18 points. Mazur, nobody open. Great downfield coverage. Now he'll throw deep for Don Jones. And it's going to be knocked away by Chris Rockins, number 37. 
It was just a blanket in the secondary for Oklahoma State. Just as it is difficult when you're, say, a wishbone or an option team and you're married to the run, you, they crowd you if they shut you off and force you in your, out of your environment to throw. Equally is it tough when you're in a behind, you got to throw the football, they can drop back and play pass. Oklahoma State, just like you said, had everybody covered. Third down, 13. Are you surprised, Ver? I really am. I really am. Jackie Sherrill was very surprised. Double coverage deep for Don Jones, incomplete at the 50-yard line. That pass had very little chance of succeeding. Rod Brown, number 27, who's come into the defensive secondary, and Chris Rockins make the tackle. And you can see the scoreboard, 4.28 to go third quarter. Now Kyle Stewart is seven yards back in the end zone and will have to kick it away. It's been a long day for John Mazur and his offensive troops. Line drive kick should be returned. Bobby Riley, the freshman wide receiver. A flag is down at the 43-yard line. There's John Mazur, who was a starting quarterback at Southern Cal, lost his job to Sean Salisbury, and decided to transfer, did. Came to a and last year, sat out a year. This is his first competitive season in two years. And had a good start in the first two games. Played very well in the first game and not quite so well last week. But it has not gone well for him today. Get the big one marked off against Oklahoma State. And John McClintock to let us know what happened. Clipping on the run back. First down. So Oklahoma State gets the ball back and they got it at their own 40 yard line. 60 yards away with a 24 to 8 lead. 21 points by the Cowboys in the second quarter. Three here in number three. Rusty Hilger under his center, David Tucker. Kenny Zachary and Rodney Hayes in the backfield now. Two fresh backs. This is Zachary. And it's a quick eight. Hand off left, hand off right. He's going behind the strength of his offensive line then. And Kevin Iko, John Sigelski on the left side. A lot of people would like to just hand off left and right if you were ahead 24 to 6 with very little time left to go in the third quarter. I mean, it, it, it may not be the most exciting thing to watch, but I tell you, for Oklahoma State and to win, it is beautiful. What's exciting is 3-0, huh? That's right. That's what you want to do, win. Second and three. Mike Kilmer in the wide receiver. Here's Zachary. And he'll be, I think, just short of the first down as Scott Polk. See, in previous years, Jimmy Johnson being at Oklahoma State, they've, they've lost games that they should have won in their non-conference schedule. That has always hurt them. That's marked them off the potential bowl list early. They had to fight back. It didn't give them momentum or confidence. A, a victory today gives them such confidence they've never had in the Johnson's years at Oklahoma State. Last year, they were 4-5-2. and two. They played A&M in the Independence Bowl a few years back. And A&M won that one, 33-16. That was an 81. Third and one to the fullback. Rodney Hayes, a junior from Little Rock, Arkansas, number 30. First carry today, good for a first down. I know from a player's perspective, when you go out and play people, you've got to respect your opponent. There are some names in college football that you really respect, and Texas A&M is one of those names, and so they're coming out here. They can win the ball game as we look at the statistics. That's a shock. <laughs> the confidence factor of beating a team you respect. Oklahoma State, this group, never done that. Jones is 6'1", 220. He's got a year left. First down and 10. Hilger puts it out near side. Caught. Jamie Harris, six catch today for the 5'10 junior from McKinney, Texas. And Jackie Sherrill distraught for the way things have gone. Kansas still leading Southern Cal, but they've shaved it to a seven-point deficit now in the second quarter. Iowa leading Ohio State, Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. Brigham Young over Air Force by six in the third quarter. Tony Weimer has come in, number 22. He and Malcolm Lewis are the wide receivers right now. So a fresh set of skill position people. First down and 10. 
Jones. Down to the 30-yard line, and Ray Childress made the tackle number 53. They're just hammering away and working on the clock. Just hammering away, and then when they get in a, a passing situation, they just throw because there's so much cushion there, and they're completing the passes. Jones four yards away from 200 yards for the day. He's carried it 30 times and looks fresh. Second down, eight. Incomplete at the 25-yard line. That was Tony we Terry Weimer, a sophomore from Joplin, Missouri, and Billy Brown, number 21, made the hit. That'll bring up a third down and six. Rusty Hilger, 6'4", 205, junior from Oklahoma City. Out most of last year and given a hardship because of a shoulder injury. Third down, eight. Whoops, flag is down. And if the play stands, it will still not be enough for the first down at the 25 as Jeff Fuller, number 37, the linebacker, made the tackle. But a flag on the near side of the field, holding Oklahoma State. Three thousand six hundred thirty-eight here at Kyle Field and College Station. Well, I agree with you. This is a terrific place to play football and to watch it. Isn't it? Oh, it's uh, it really is special, and people until they've been here really can't appreciate it because. And, and walking across the campus yesterday, right? I mean, we've been all over college football, and I, it was so wonderful. People would greet you with a smile. I mean, people may think it's corny, but I tell you what, people would look at you. You look at them; they're going to say hello, and that's not typical of most college campuses. Very nice young people. You get howdy to death here, and it's so refreshing you can't believe it. Yeah, I did. It really is like uh, a scene out of the 1950s. Third down and 16. Hilger throws it short. Look at that. Man is wide open. Nobody within seven, eight yards of him. The tight end, John Chesley. And Domingo Bryant was the closest, but he was about eight yards away. You've got to notice that uh, Oklahoma State's throwing the ball a little bit more because they're getting such a cushion again. I, Jackie Sherrill has got to be just total in shock about the amount of distance between a defender and the receiver. Way too much cushion. Larry Roach will try a field goal into the wind of 49 yards. And he is kicking it into a fairly stiff breeze. His career longest is 56. Plenty of leg. Good from 49 out. <laughs> 1 0 1 to go in the third quarter. The Cowboys of Oklahoma State have increased their lead. It now stands at 21. Chevy Tough is taking charge with a big USA One truck sellathon. We're out to sell 75,000 trucks by October 1st with 200,000 trucks from coast to coast. This is dealing time. And year-end allowances on 83s can mean great clearance prices. Get specially equipped Chevy S10 pickups and maxi cabs with V6 College Station, Texas, CBS, and NCAA football for the second year in succession. Glad to have all of you with us. Bern Lundquist and Steve Davis at Oklahoma State routing Texas A&M 27 to 6 right now. Kevin Godfrey will kick it deep to a trio of uh, potential return men, Tony Slayton, Joey Harris, and Jeff Nelson. Perhaps the best tradition here is that the uh, Aggies get to kiss their girlfriends every time they score. And they've only scored six points for that. You wouldn't get a whole lot of sugar today. <laughs> Great downfield coverage and another flag is down at the 10-yard line. So we'll uh, try and wait to see what happens. I asked Jimmy Johnson on Thursday what he's most proud about the Oklahoma State program. And you, you think a lot of different answers come back. He said, but first of all, he said, I'm glad of the attitude change here at Oklahoma State. I'm glad that we're graduating a high percentage of our players. And he said a lot of players are staying around to complete their athletic career at Oklahoma State. He went from Port Arthur to Arkansas, where he helped Frank Royals and that great Arkansas team in the mid-60s win a national championship. That's Jimmy Johnson. Now John Mazur heads into the Aggie huddle with 56 seconds to go in the third quarter, and Oklahoma State on top, 27 to 6. 
That last scoring drive, 51 yards. Time of possession now, 26 minutes for Oklahoma State to only 17 minutes for AM. And we've got the final 56 seconds of the third quarter. First down, 10. Aggies at the six. Mesa to throw from the end zone. That's batted down behind the line by the nose guard, John Washington, number 80. Got a fist up and hit it. Stop defense, man. Got to work. Second and 10 from the six. 51 seconds to go. Second and 10 from the six-yard line. Jackie Sherrill standing next to R.C. Slocum. Bernstein to the 16-yard line. Ken Reeves led the way to big guard number 57. And Leslie O'Neill and Harry Roberts finally made the tackle, and that's uh, one of Bernstein's better efforts today. Number 29 from Bryan High School. Did not start the first game, didn't play. And then led all rushers last week with 76 yards. Most of the inconsistencies that Texas A&M have had during the day have been basically results of the Oklahoma State opportunistic defense. They have just played very smart and they've, they've given a little bit on first downs at times and been able, been able to make the big play. Mazur had been hitting 55% of his passes coming in. He had not been intercepted, nor had he been sacked. He has been picked off three times today and been knocked down behind the line twice. It is an aggressive Oklahoma State Cowboy defense. First down 10, though, for Texas A&M. away near side Rod Fisher senior from Dallas it was intended for Jimmy Teal second and ten ball at the end of hey Skip Shackelford is our handheld cameraman he has been all over the lot today now he's up in the stands <laughs> second down at dead with 24 seconds to go third quarter Second and ten. George Smith. Fumble. AF gets it back. And that should be the final play of the third quarter. Tackle was by number 40, James Ham. Smith will leave the ball game now with uh, an apparent injury. And Jimmy Hawkins hurries in, or Bernstein, rather, number 29. So this will be the final play of quarter number three with Oklahoma State leading 27 to 6. That's the end of the third quarter. Our score, Oklahoma State 27, A&M 6. Oklahoma State, Texas A&M is an exclusive presentation of CBS Sports. We'll be back with fourth quarter action after this message and a word from your local station. Welcome back to Kyle Field, College Station, Texas. CBS Sports and the NCAA, Oklahoma State, leading Texas A&M 27-6. Bert Lundquist, along with Steve Davis. An early quick start by the Aggies, in which they recovered a couple of uh, fumbles from Oklahoma State. Got two field goals out of Allen Smith, but could not push it in. And then an Adam Hines interception of John Mazur in the end zone, as A&M was about to score its first touchdown of the day. Seem to turn the tone of things, and it's been all Oklahoma State since. Mazur has been intercepted three times. Going deep for his tight end, but Siler incomplete, and a flag is down. We may have a pushing call on Harry Roberts, number six. He is another converted offensive player, Roberts. He was a running back last year and picked up 378 yards behind Ernest Anderson. It is indeed pass interference on Roberts, number six. Let's see if we can find Harry Roberts, number six. Let's see where, right there, there he is, breaking on the receiver, going through. Well, I don't know where the flag came in. 
but I'm sure he was right. Will Timmons, number 31. Whoops. John Mazur fell on the ball, and that one did not work. Leslie O'Neill recovered it. Almost. Georgia Tech falls to Clemson 41 to 14 as uh, a heavy day of NCAA college football underway. West Virginia knocks off the Eagles of Boston College in Boston. Kentucky leading Tulane by 10 in the third quarter. And our score is 27 to 6, Oklahoma State. Second down, long. Mazur in trouble. Mazur being chased. Mazur being down. Number 40, number 99, Leslie O'Neill, sophomore, Little Rock, Arkansas. Third sack today. Oklahoma State is at home against Tulsa, Nebraska, and Oklahoma the next three weeks. Jimmy Johnson said about his defensive football team that they do not have the size, but they believe in fanatical effort, and that has, is what we've seen all afternoon. Auburn knocks off Tennessee, 37-14, a final score. Third down, 20. Draw play. Jimmy Hawkins out to the 15. Sophomore from San Antonio. And Mark Moore made the tackle. Iowa State comes from behind and defeats Colorado State. And Texas A&M will have to punt. Missouri wins by seven over Utah State. Nebraska, 32-point victory over UCLA. Kyle Stewart on the punt for the Aggies. Rod Fisher is back, calls for the fair catch. Let's it bounce, gets an Aggie roll. And crosses the 50, will come to a stop at the 44-yard line. That's a 41-yard punt for Kyle Stewart, but that is not what a &M needs. They need the football. Back live at Kyle Field in College Station, 27-6, Oklahoma State over AM. They fell behind in the first quarter, 6-0, got a pass interception from Adam Hines in the end zone, an 80-yard run from Sean Jones, two touchdown passes, Hilger to Jamie Harris, and Jackie Sherrill has not got the headsets on. First down and 10. Backs are in the eye behind Rusty Hilger. Sean Jones, that'll put him close to 200 for the day. He's out to the 46-yard line. 12.50 to go in the ball game. Do you think it's fair to say because Jackie Sherrill, when he left Pitt, that there was so much pressure, the contract discussions, the high dollar figures, I mean, people have got to be realistic. I mean, they've only had eight winning seasons since 1960, and yet uh, it's been frustrating. Well, I think one reason, though, because of the criticism, is that Tom Wilson was fired after a winning season. That's right. And they went after Jackie Sherrill, and of course he had done such a marvelous job at Pitt. They did expect instant national championship. Second down. Jones will, or rather, Kenny Zachary, runs into the arms of Keith Guthrie, number 74. Guthrie is a senior now playing at nose guard who was a three-year starter here, but has disappeared off the depth chart and has been a disappointment to the defensive staff. Billy Cannon, Greg Berry, number 48, Cannon, number 22, Darrell Austin, number one, Jeff Payne, number 49, is a former tight end. And there's Childress, Ray Childress, number 53. Had another gutsy day today. 11.45 to go in the ball game. Third down, 10, or third down, 7. Give it off up the middle to Rodney Hayes. And he runs into Jerry Bullitt. It'll be fourth down, and John Conway comes on the punt. It was a 21-point second quarter for Oklahoma State that set the tone for this game. Jamie Harris, the kid you just saw, number 83, caught two touchdown passes, and Sean Jones had an 80-yard run in that quarter. Here's the snap back for Conway. Billy Cannon waits to return it. It'll go into the end zone. Aggies are searching for a miracle. They trail 27 to 6, and we've got 11 minutes to go. 11.04 remaining in the game. Aggies have a first down at their own 20. For the day, they have 109 yards of total offense. Flags are down. 50 yards on the ground, 59 through the air, and Oklahoma State has 373 yards, including 234 on the ground. 
And we've got an offside or encroachment call now against Texas A&M. Oklahoma defeats Tulsa by 10. That's a encroachment. That's an, get the offense. That's an important uh, game, really, for Tulsa to play that well. I mean, that's got to be a confidence builder for them. Brigham Young over Air Force in the fourth quarter. That's game still going on in Colorado, pounding Oregon State now by 31. First down, 15. John Mazur is 7 of 18. Man for man coverage. There's a bump and a flag and a pass interference call at the 50-yard line. <laughs> Rod Fisher. The pass was intended for number 23, Jimmy Teal. And not much question about this. Let's see what, what happens. I think it's against Jimmy Teal, number 23. I think the receiver is offensive pass interference. Let's see what happens. I think they get, well, we, well it looks like his hands are he pushed or shoved a little bit on uh, Rod Fisher. That's the call. That's the call. So Teal has to make the long trot to the Aggie bench. And John McClintock lets us know what happens. And loss of down. Loss of down, half the distance. And it'll be second down and 25. Bernstein, stiff arm, out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Forced there by Chris Rockins, number 37, and Warren Thompson. Texas Tech, alma mater of our producer Jim Silman, defeats Baylor 26-11 today. And Houston leading Oregon by 8, 14-6. Kansas still leading Southern Cal. They're at the half right now. And that would be a huge upset. Of course, in the conference tonight, North Texas will be at Texas. Rice is at home against Southwest Louisiana. The conference game, the key one, Bobby Collins, SMU Mustangs, over in Fort Worth against Jim Wacker and the TCU Horn Frogs. Mazur bumps into his own man, tries to scramble and can't, and is knocked down at the 12. Rusty Hilger's mom. She's kind of happy. Oh, they ought to be happy. The last two drives, Oklahoma State's got. Texas A&M in third and long, long situation. <laughs> Bobby Riley is back to return the punt of Kyle Stewart. Good kick by Stewart. Oh, what a dandy. Riley at the 35. Gets it to the 40-yard line, and we have another flag down. Greg Shepard made the tackle. A 50-yard kick and three on the return. Let's see against whom the infraction is called. It'll be against Oklahoma State. And it's a big one. Clipping on the run back. First down. 10 minutes, 11 seconds to go in the ballgame. 27 to 6, Oklahoma State. And they are back on offense. So we'll be back here at Kyle Field and College Station in just a moment. <laughs> 10 minutes, 11 seconds remaining in the ballgame. Oklahoma State with a 27 to 6 lead. That is a fish. A freshman at Texas A&M. Pitch out, left side. Sean Jones hit by Rod Sadler, and yet one more flag is down. No, man, no. Tackle was made by Jeff Payne. There's another look at the 12th man. Three of them, Tom Baumgartner is one of the members you saw. And apparently yet one more infraction against Oklahoma State. They have already been hit with 11 penalties for 115 yards. And we're going to get another. To the 15-yard line, here's the call. Holding on the offense, still first down. Make it first down, 19. 
of Oklahoma State. They lead 27 to 6. They led 21 6 at the half. All of a sudden, it's gone sour for Sean Jones, and Keith Guthrie made that tackle. Number 74, Billy Cannon came up to help. There's Guthrie, a senior out of Tyler. Thought to be a man with pro potential, but uh, a question mark now. Oklahoma State, 12 penalties for 125 yards. The Aggies, 6 for 41. Clock is momentarily stopped for an injured player at the 27-yard line. Or the official, rather. Billy Pickard, who has for a long time been the head trainer here at AM, is out there. And the team position is as well. So timeout has been called. We've got 9.52 remaining in the ball game and a 27-6 Oklahoma. Tonight, the game that could make or break the season for Jerry Faust fighting Irish. It's Notre Dame against Miami from the Orange Bowl tonight on CBS Sports. Well, that's a pressure game for Jerry Faust and the fighting Irish at Notre Dame. It will be coming up tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern time. Live as CBS gives you an NCAA football doubleheader here in September. Notre Dame and Miami. Our official is just fine. And we're back to play with a second down and 19. Sean Jones now with 192 yards. He's eight away from 200. He'll get the handoff and nothing more. Keith Guthrie with his second fine defensive play. Jones has carried 34 times for 193 yards. It'll be third down at 18. The official who was injured was Bill Anger, but he was just fine, the umpire. Third down, 18. 9.08 to go in the game. Jones for the 19. His 35th carry today. It'll be a punting situation. Oklahoma State's playing very smart football. Third down and long. Just decided to play it safe. Don't put it in the air. Don't make mistakes. Steve, you've, you've lived in Oklahoma all of your life. You've followed this program. How big is this victory for them? Oh, I think it's an extremely big, big victory. If it's anything more than just a confidence builder, it means that much for Oklahoma State. The 3 and 0. John Conway with the win. Billy Cannon at the 31. Special teams are getting into the act as well. Good coverage. 49-yard kick, five on the return, and a hang time of 4.2. Mike Hudson downfield to make the tackle of Billy Cannon. Tomorrow, many of you will see an NFL doubleheader on CBS Sports. The early game will be the New Orleans Saints against the Dallas Cowboys, a team the Saints have beaten only once since their inception in 67. Then in the doubleheader game, it'll be either the Washington Redskins and the Seattle Seahawks or the L.A. Rams against the New York Jets. It all starts with the NFL today, tomorrow. Aggies have a double tight end set with one running back. That's George Smith. First down, 10 at their own 37. Mazer in trouble. Ducks out of the tackle and rolls to his left. Puts it up. Caught. Jeff Nelson, number eight. James Spencer made the tackle. This is where Reveille's one, two, and three are buried. That is at the north end of the end zone, and they are buried in such a fashion that supposedly, according to legend, they can always see the scoreboard here at Kyle Field. Reveille 1 was a, a wild collie that was discovered by members of the Cadet Corps in 31, 1931. And we're currently on Reveille 4. Here's Smith, double teamed and down at the 42. Harry Roberts, number 6, and James Spencer, 85, made the back. And Smith is going to come out with that uh, nagging injury again. Third down and three. 7-10 to go in the game. Stay back, man. Stay behind the line. Stay back. Tipped and incomplete. Intended for Jimmy Williams, number 88, the wide receiver. Harry Roberts, running back a year ago. 
was back to uh, receiving. Third down conversions have been a disaster for Texas A&M so far today. They are currently one out of 13 on third down conversions. They have just had a tough day today. Kyle Stewart to punt. Bobby Riley to return it from the 11. Fumble. Aggies recovered. Daryl Smith has it. Number 39. And not that many of the folks have gone home here. We told you at the start of the show they've got, I think, as strong and loyal a, a group of followers as any place I have ever been. And this place still has about 50,000 folks in it with 6.44 to go in the game. Bobby Riley's a freshman from Stroud, Oklahoma. Last year he played with Stroud High School. It's a lot different down here today. Jimmy Williams goes wide left. Jeff Nelson is wide right. Roger Vick is in the lineup. He gets the handoff with a pitch out and is going to get one tough yard down inside the 10 as John Washington, the nose guard, made the tackle. Steve, I've been impressed with Sean Jones, obviously, and the Hilger-Harris connection, but this entire defensive unit of Oklahoma State has been outstanding. They really have. They've, they've just swarmed. They've give, given fanatical effort. They had everything defense had been well planned uh, had a good scheme coming in second and long Vic or Rod Bernstein rather a freshman from Bryan is down near the six yard line the leading ground gainer now is Bernstein 34 yards for A&M on 11 carries John Mazur wants timeout and will be accommodated Thirty-eight-year-old Jackie Sherrill, one of Bears boys, played eight different positions for the University of Alabama football team before he graduated in 1966. He's not going to invite us back, Davis. Last year it was Texas Tech knocking off his team here. Up in Austin and uh, Dallas a year ago, we televised SMU's win over him. Winningest active coaches, guy you know, Barry Switzer, Paterno Osborne, and then Jackie Sherrill. But he's only six and seven here at Texas A&M. Overall, 59 wins, 24 losses, and one tie. And for Jimmy Johnson, one of the bigger wins, I should think, in his five-year career outside of the conference. Has to be. There's just no doubt. They, they played a lot of teams that they just did not respect. And rather than win what they were supposed the games they were supposed to win they lost them and it's always been a problem going in the big eight schedule and that's why this game is so important third down five almost intercepted rod brown a junior from gainesville texas almost had the fourth interception of the day and now on fourth down and five. They're going to send Alan Smith on. I think they're going for stats now because three points don't do them a whit of good. All right, but son, I hear some booze in front of us. I'm not at all sure why they're kicking the field goal. I don't understand it either. 27 to 6. But Alan Smith will try it from the 12 yard line. So again, the Aggies unable to get in the end zone. Smith gets his third of the day. And that cuts the margin to 27 to 9, 546 to go in the football game. We're back at Kyle Field, 27 to 9. And there's a prospected Aggie football player a few years down. A&M has had to settle for three field goals today, each of them following the fumble recovery. They have been unable to put together anything resembling a drive of consequence. Harry Robs, Roberts and Bobby Riley are expecting the onside kick. They are at the 20-yard line. Alan Smith has the 12th man out there. Here's the onside kick. Scramble for it at the 35. And Oklahoma State has come up with it. The Cowboys get it back at their own 40-yard line with 5.46 to go. 
Mike Kilmer recovered it. Sean Jones for the uh, record keepers is now at 197 yards. He's been at 190 most of the fourth quarter. Iowa leading Ohio State 20 to 14. Would that be a big win for Hayden Fry and Chuck Long and those guys? Oh. First down and 10. Sean Jones to the 45 yard line. It was his 80 yard run in the second quarter that put Oklahoma State on top seven to six a lead that they have not given up but have only increased. And he is now across 200 yards for the first time in his career. Sean Jones 202 yards on 36 carries and one touchdown that of 80 yards. Second down five. Jones to the 48 fumble. Aggies have it. Recovered by Johnny Holland, number 11, a freshman defensive back. Maybe this is what Jack and Cheryl was thinking about when they decided to go for the field goal, that something good would happen. The ball just pops loose on the ground. And there it is, and Texas A&M gets the ball. You know, there's a lot of second guessing you can put on, but what if that would have happened they maybe they go for the play to get the touchdown they don't get it they fumble deep then they don't have to go 45 yards Mazur batted down intended for Jimmy Hawkins and Warren Thompson number 91 got a big paw up and knocked it away turnovers are even a four and four but they have been pass interceptions for Texas A&M and fumble recoveries, or rather fumble recoveries for the Aggies and pass interceptions for Oklahoma State for the most part. Under five minutes to go in the game, second down and 10, 27 to nine, Oklahoma State on top. Rich Seiler, the big tight end at the 41. That'll make it third down at about five. Third and four. James Ham, number 40, made the tackle. The way Oklahoma State has played pass defense, they'll not give up the big ball. They'll give you the short passes. And you'll watch John Mazur. He'll have to look deep first and then go probably the short receiver, probably towards the sideline. Third and four. Intercepted by James Ham, the defensive end, number 40. He's still loose. He is still loose. Now he's got a wall. Four men in front. He'll score. A sophomore from Merritt Island Florida played on the special teams a year ago his first interception and his first touchdown James Ham number 40 69 yard return and Larry Roach is on for the extra point thirty four to nine Oklahoma State has it wrapped up Watch John Mazur. Let's see what kind of pressure he gets. I think the pocket was there. He gets a little bit outside pressure. He's going across the middle to Jimmy Teal. Forces the ball. Ham, the defensive end, has dropped in the coverage area. Now watch him start to pick up his blockers. He's just letting him set up. Everybody converges on him. And then right there, he gets a good wall, good run inside. And then it's just a track. Now he's got one more block, and it's on the quarterback. He threw the interception. That is a big play. The setup being tied up. Make a touch. Here's the kickoff out of the end zone. It'll come back to the 20. And we might see a new quarterback now for Texas A&M. Kevin Murray, freshman from Dallas, who is the uh, subject of a much publicized lawsuit. There's a good look at James Ham with Malcolm Lewis, number eight, right in front of him. Put together a heck of a run, but there was some rather sloppy tackling attempts well that's right they're not uh, they're not good block at tackles on offense generally you don't want to get too good Kevin Murray who played last year in the minor league chain of the Milwaukee Brewers 
Baseball, he fumbles the snap, picks it up, rolls out to his left. And fires it deep. It's caught for the first down. Up at the 34-yard line. Caught by Jeff Nelson, the sophomore tight end out of Beaumont. 420 remaining in the game. Kevin Murray played one year for Pikeville, Kentucky in the Brewers chain. Hit 178 as a center fielder and decided he didn't want to play baseball anymore. He had signed a letter of intent here two years ago. Came here and the Brewers filed a lawsuit demanding that he not be allowed to play football or return his $35,000 bonus. It's still in the courts, but uh, so far he's under injunction to be allowed to play. Going deep, caught by Jeff Nelson at the 33-yard line. Rod Brown made the tackle, number 27. Let's see what the quarterback's looking at. He's going to be uh, going right now to Jeff Nelson, number, number eight. Rod Brown, 27, will be there, crossing around, a deep crossing around. The ball's behind, good defensive effort, just over-missed him, overshot him, and then Nelson's able to make the yardage. Good effort by the receiver. Kevin Murray, two for two, first down, 10 at the 33. 3 for 3. Rich Seiler to the 21-yard line, 22. That is Seiler's fourth catch today. Murray is 3 for 3. A flag is down in the offensive backfield. What you're getting now, the Oklahoma State defense is really dropping back. Linebackers, they're going to Seiler the tight end underneath the linebackers. See, there's an open area right there. There's your two linebackers, and that's why Seiler makes the catch. But I think we can forget about it. Well, it was a good replay anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the you, point, did, you did very well. Uh, on thank the, you. But the thing the is, the linebackers dropped so far back, and he's just going to the underneath, and they're giving it 15 yards. They'll walk it back the other direction, however, and put the ball down at the 38-yard line. Here's the call from John McClintock. Illegal use of hands on the offense. It is still first down. Ball has been marked back only five yards. Illegal use of hands. First and 15. Across the middle, Nelson. Touchdown! Finally, the Aggies get to kiss their dates. 38 yards. Well, they're high-fiving like they're in front. But they still trail 34 to 15. Kevin Murray, freshman quarterback out of Dallas. To Jeff Nelson, sophomore wide receiver from Beaumont. They'll go for two. is open incomplete intended for Jimmy Williams he made the catch but a yard short Stanley Blair number 20 doing the defensive work so now the 12th man comes on in anticipation of the onside kick this time they're going beyond the linebackers the linebackers will drop about 12 15 yards but they're going to go right behind there oh the ball's over right over there's Nelson that catches the pass and the two deep backs Nelson was able to get right between them and the touchdown That isn't going to be enough. <laughs> 34 to 15. And Alan Smith is getting ready for the onside attempt. Of course, coming up tonight at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 8 o'clock Central, Notre Dame versus Miami. And Notre Dame trying to shake off the effects of an upset loss to Michigan State last week. Miami has won two out of their three. And among their victories was a decisive win over Houston. Live at 9 o'clock Eastern Time tonight over most of these CBS stations. Harry Roberts and Bobby Riley wait for the expected onside kick. Alan Smith with three field goals today. And 325 to go in the game.
Oklahoma State retains it. Mike Kilmer again, number 89, second time on the onside attempt. He has made the catch. And the Cowboys, who are on the verge of going 3-0 and before heading home for the next three weeks, still have a 19-point lead. Murray hits Nelson with a 38-yard pass, 80 yards in a minute five. Oklahoma State has the ball at their own 45-yard line. And a new quarterback, Mike Jackson, number seven, a junior from Fort Smith, Arkansas. That's good for a gain of three. Jerry Bullock makes the tackle. We're in a state of panic here because we don't have a number 32 on the roster. Here's Jackson throwing it deep left side. Fumble. Aggies recover. Now they're going to say the ball was down. Malcolm Lewis, the intended receiver, and got it. Jeff Payne with a recovery, but they'll say that the, uh, the ball was down. So Oklahoma State still has it at the Aggie 41-yard line. First down, 10, 2.30 remaining on the clock. Jackson, Terry Weimer, number 22, near side. Sophomore, been a long, long day for John Mazur. He did not come to A&M for this. Part of the frustrations have to be the fact that he didn't throw the ball well. He forced it into coverage, but you've got to give so much credit to the Oklahoma State defense. Well prepared as they came into the football game. They had their positions correct. They knew where the ball was going. They had them defense very well all afternoon. Second down, two. Up it goes, another fumble. They're going to say the ball was down. I believe that was the unknown running back. That carried it again. Will Timmons, number 31. This time, Cannon makes the recovery. The running back in question is Chuck Crawford, Charles Crawford, number 32. Took us a long time to find him anywhere because he's not listed on the Oklahoma State squad list that they gave us, but he is on their rooming list. Iowa has defeated Ohio State 20 to 14. What a great win for Hayden Crawford. Would it be fair to say that Iowa has returned uh, to the elite there in the Big Ten? Oh, boy. 2020, USC has fought back now. And there's a whistle before the snap is made. Gosh, that's a big win for them. Oh, it is. Of course, you and I saw Iowa in the Peach Bowl last year, and they had a lot of folks coming back and a pretty good football team then. Well, they felt like, the, you know, that you have to take it when you're building programs. you got to take it in little, little short, choppy steps. And uh, getting the Peach Bowl last year was one step, and the victory over Ohio State today is another big one. Here's the call from John McClintock. Offside on the defense, illegal procedure on the offense, <laughs> offsetting penalty. So we'll try it again with 1.46 to go in the ball game. 34-15, Oklahoma State leads it. They fell behind 6-0, scored 21 points in the second quarter, and have not been headed since. They had a 21-6 lead at the half. Murray is hit, and he was in the process of throwing the ball. That is an inadvertent flag that just popped out of the official's uniform. Incomplete pass. Stops the clock with a minute 40 to go. Boy, as you review the football game, you wonder what happened to Texas A&M, and all I can really assess is that just like they came out trying to do something they were not comfortable with, run the football. They didn't go to their passing game. They didn't go to what had been uh, very effective for them in their first two games. And they could not get it in after those two fumble recoveries and the 80-yard sprint by Sean Jones really rocked them. Here's Murray. Oh, he's an athlete, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Incomplete, Jimmy Teal at the 48-yard line. 
And that again stops the clock with 1.32 to go. Chris Rockins, number 37, was down there defending. Rockins is a senior from Sherman, Texas, and has been a starter for 37 consecutive games. But not always at the same position. Uh, Kevin Murray is uh, three out of five for 85 yards. Third down, 10. Tipped away. Flying is down. I would say I'm a little fast with him here. <laughs> James Spencer over the over the back of Rich Seiler. He was a little excited. Oregon has come from behind and uh, leads Houston now, 15 to 14. I mentioned most of the Southwest Conference teams that are playing. Colorado defeats Oregon State, 38 to 7. Arkansas is at Ole Miss tonight. Of course, we mentioned the SMU TCU game and North Texas and Texas in Austin this evening. Automatic first down, Murray being chased, fumbles, recovers, flag is down. Rodney Harding, number 42, had him wrapped up. This may be the world's longest fourth quarter. Holding pen penalty that time as he was forced out of the pocket. You can just see a lineman, one of the Oklahoma State defenders gets away from him, and so he tries to take advantage and grab on him a little bit, hold him back, trying to get a chance. What, so, a long, what a long day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Especially so for the guys in the maroon jerseys and the coaching staff and their fans. Here's the call. Decline. Penalty is declined, the holding call. So that'll make it second down. And 17. Do you think Reveille one even wants to look at the scoreboard? I, I don't think so. There'll be better moments for Jackie Sherrill. Second and 17. Draw play. Jimmy Hawkins. He's close for a first down at the 46-yard line. Chris Rockins made the tackle. Aggies want to go without the huddle. They're ready. They may decide to kill the clock for the measurement. So they'll bring the chain from the far side of the field and see if they got enough for the first down. That's Jeff Bolton, the bottom of your screen, a young swift wide receiver out of the Dallas area, number 26, was a red shirt last year. Kevin Murray, freshman from Dallas. It'll be second down. 16 yard gain on the run. And just about. Uh, short amount. Jackie Shero getting ready to send his next play in with Jimmy Teal. And we're under a minute. The clock is running. 45 seconds to go. Quarterback keeper. Now Teal hurries on and calls timeout. So the Aggies have called timeout. They trail 34-15. 45 seconds remaining in the game. Five seconds remaining in the ball game. A long afternoon for the guys on the near side. They led 6-0 and were in control. We're going in to score their first touchdown. Adam Hines intercepted a pass. And then it began to turn around. Here's Murray in deep and serious trouble. Down at the 30-yard line. A three-man rush. They've got all their people in. And he's caught behind the line. So Kevin Murray comes to the near side. That is a loss from the 49 all the way back to the 32. And it's been a bright day in the sunlight for Jimmy Johnson. We've got 35 seconds remaining back in just a moment. 35 seconds remaining in the ball game. Second down and 27, a 17 yard loss in the last play. Murray with his back split, Jimmy Hawkins and Rod Bernstein. Three wide receivers in the lineup. This is a four man rush by Oklahoma State this time. Murray in trouble. Will be hauled down by John Washington at the 26 yard line. And the clock still running with 23 seconds to go. 
Well, it really is a very significant victory for Jimmy Johnson and Oklahoma State. Steve. It gives them confidence, momentum. It keeps them on the bowl list. It gives them an encouragement to go into the uh, tough schedule they've got coming when they go back home to Stillwater. Final nine seconds of the ball game. Murray, near side. That'll stop the clock with three seconds to go. And Chris Rockins, a big part of an outstanding defensive effort today. Total yardage so far, 207 for AM, 408 for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Five turnovers for both ball clubs, but a strong ground game and a really tenacious defensive unit of Oklahoma State have given them the victory. For Jackie Sherrill, a long trip to Lubbock and Texas Tech next week. And for Jimmy Johnson, three games in a row at home. Final play of the game, except there's a flag down. <laughs> Oklahoma State, Texas A&M is an exclusive presentation of CBS Sports. We'll return after this word from your local station. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Ray Childress of Texas A&M with 11 tackles today and Sean Jones of Oklahoma State, 202 yards rushing. A check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen fields. It's a final. Oklahoma State wins it over Texas A&M, 34 to 15. The Cowboys are three and zero. The Aggies one and two. The executive producer of College Sports is Kevin O'Malley. Today's coverage of the Oklahoma State-Texas A&M game was produced by Jim Silman and directed by Larry Cavallino. Our associate producer was Bob Rowe, the field technical manager, John Kruer, technical supervisor, Bill McKechnie. Our technical director was Tom Courtney, audio, Bill Williams, and our broadcast associate was Sarah Fisher. Be sure to stay with us for scores and highlights with Brett Musburger and Eric Parsega in New York. It was the strong running of Sean Jones. He rushed for 202 yards, replacing an injured Ernest Anderson, who today led Oklahoma State to this 34 to 15 win over the favored Texas Aggies, who uh, committed four pass interceptions today. And that is the cause for the long faces here in Kyle, Kyle Field. Once again, the final score was Oklahoma State 34, Texas A&M 15. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.